What up, Tuesday Painters? How you guys doing? Uh, big shout out to Malika, 34 Enoch Crew, and the Super Gamer Boys for the subs that we got before the stream. How you guys doing this Tuesday? I'm doing pretty good. Actually, I'm doing pretty bad. I got the paint of space brain right now, so I'm not feeling so hot. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, there's my boy. What up? What up? Hey, Adam Stevens. Akimbo Gogurts. Oh, hail the Moistener. Indeed. I like that fucking name, dude. New Dota Hero. No, new Dota Hero, indeed. A uh, little bit of a disappointing patch from a gameplay perspective, but the new hero is much appreciated. Oh my god, I'm so moist. How are you guys doing today? Have to, air quotes, indeed. Heaven, indeed. Um, what kind of space brand is it? It is a Space Wolf, the 13th company Space Wolf. H Jam, thanks for the sub. 11 months, appreciate it, man. Why the mandatory marine? Oh, it's, I mean, I'm, you know, largely joking. Obviously, I can do whatever I want, but um, very long time ago, seven years ago, I, uh, I committed to painting 10 marines for a series called Heavy Metal Marines, and I will, I will finish my, my commitment I swear this to you, viewer. No, I, I just gotta paint the last one. The last one is a, a space wolf. I haven't done that chapter yet. And we have this glorious conversion from Val Um And it's, uh, it's a great conversion. And so I'm excited to paint it. Um, and yeah, painting it in that typical 13th company space wolf uh, scheme, which is like mostly grays and uh, black and red. And a little, bit of, a little bit of chaos touch in there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just a lot of fun. Can we use the seven year Mimas one too? Absolutely, go for it. Caleb Sweet, thanks for the sub. We appreciate it. Alamo Six with the gifted five subs. Thank you, Alamo. Appreciate it. Oh, thank God. That was the last space marine from that Blood Angel Commission. Oh, no, that shit's done. That shit is done, Akimbo. Good to see you, man. I haven't seen you in a while. I mean, if you're going to paint a space marine, you pick a sick one. I mean, it is. I can't wait to show you guys. Um, you, you might have seen this in a video already. Um, but this is, this is a little conversion by um, a guy named Val Bjorn on uh, whoa hmm. on um, Instagram. Ancient history, indeed. Are we going to see you paint the Miniac Elf from Legend of the Keepers here sometime? I just backed that Kickstarter and saw your mini. Uh, probably not. Um, I don't want to say um, no. Uh, but, uh, yeah, probably not. What do you think, Evan? I think Upside Down is good. Yeah? Give me a second. But yeah, so I'm in the middle of doing the Heavy Metal Marines episode, and the process is pretty long. Um, and so I thought that I would uh, keep painting today while on stream. And I've done two very... Um, subtle layers of shading with glazing so far um, and now I'm working on my first pass of reset shading which always uh, is very challenging um, this is zoomed in 200% right now um, it's its standard setup right now damn that is really fucking zoomed in you got your camera real zoomed in I think I have it just zoomed in just 6 millimeter, 12 to 18 we'll back it out but yeah, so this is where we're at right now, stream. You can see how toward the bottom of select armor panels, there is a, a bit of subtle shading. Um, and I have just started to do the recess shading. And some of these blends are a little bit, um, a little bit sus, uh, not totally smooth, uh, like we've come to appreciate from heavy metal marines or from uh, just, just heavy metal painting in general. So I'm gonna have to fix some of these. Um, yeah, did I do the conversion? No, I did not do the conversion. This was done by Val Bjorn, uh, V-A-L-B-J-O-R-N. That's probably gonna be a question that we're gonna get a lot. Like that? No, oh, there's an extra A in there. Uh, yeah, extra A. Um, amazing, amazing converter on Instagram. Does, he has uh, some Night Lords conversions he's done that are fucking amazing, but at the moment he's uh, focusing mostly on uh, Space Wolves. And the conversions are incredible. Um, all of us Legend of Keepers shills should paint each other's minis. Oh, <laughs> you have one too, Jay? That's fucking awesome. Here's the uh, 
Instagram in question. Nice, yeah. One of the coolest things about his conversions is that he does conversions for things that cannot exist in real life. And what I mean by that are he gives his characters fanged teeth and he gives uh, other people other very, very thin and slender details. And um, the details are so small that they would not cast in plastic. Like there'd be too many undercuts and it just wouldn't work. So it's really a, an amazing way of uh, just doing these super subtle and very, very, um, I don't know, very delicate conversions with bone and all these strings. They look amazing. Akimbo Gogurts with the sub. Thank you, sir. What up, Anavana? Cool stuff. Oh shit, nice dead alive. Oh right, yes, the, the, wait, is that the sub notification? Is uh, dead alive? Yeah, the kick ass for the Lord thing. Is that what it is? Oh right, oh man, that was such Durr. a long... It's been a while. You set it up, Scott. I know, it's been a while. I can't remember what, what sounds go for what. It is so excellent, Warsmith paint. So yeah, let's, uh. Let's we'll we'll chill out today and we'll just we'll paint this uh, the space marine. It's gonna be a long process uh, because it is a video. Uh, I may have to dip into the B-roll room to to shoot some video of that, but I can bring you along with me when I do that. Jacob Newman and Xanth one one seven. Thank you for the subs, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, let's just do some very slow and tedious uh, recess shading. It'll be a lot of fun. I swear. Um. I have to uh, probably clean up some of this recess shading as well. I think a, a very typical process for painting in this style is, is a lot of uh, corrective layers. Um, yeah, cutting back and forth to make things sharper and sharper. Yeah, and maybe if you're a painting god, you don't have to do that. Uh, but I know uh, I have to do that. Um, Cause like, like look here in this little, this little area of the knee. We got a little bit too much brown. I tried to round that corner sooner than the actual radius was and so I had to come in with some gray and fix that. Now I don't, when you do this glazing toward the bottom of these armor panels, it makes making corrections much more challenging. Um, so we'll have to try to contend with that a little bit. Troda, thank you for the three months subbing. You missed a spot, nice. Are you going to Chris in the new studio with a drunk painting video? Oh, we got to at some point. I watched that on bootleg ass DVD in a basement. Uh, yeah, that, it is wild that it was Peter Jackson. It is. Uh, what up, Manager Stash, Derby Dewey, Mycelium Baines, the new house? Awesome. Imagine painting a menu without any correction. Whew. That would be interesting. I, that's a concept for a video right there. Hyper Druid, thanks for the Prime sub. Um, all right, where are we looking right now? I have a little mixture of Rhinox hide and I also mixed some Wildwood, Wildwood into it. Uh, that is a GW contrast paint. You're using all GW paints for this? Oh yeah, baby. Just got a, got a Omega shill for GW when doing the Space Marine series. I know sometimes I've done the series where I haven't um, painted um, with GW paints. It's like an experiment, uh, but this one we're going we're going full balls to the wall for sure. Yeah, super gamer boys and five gifted subs. You guys are fucking killing it right now, y'all. Yeah, we got to do the giveaway already. We oh, didn't even uh, talk about it. We didn't even talk about it, but we were doing a giveaway. We did Damn we, we do giveaways uh, all the time. It's a constantly revolving giveaway door here. Um, we're giving away some Malifaux models. They're called Executioner Electrocutioners, and they are from the game called The Other Side. Um, I don't know exactly what The Other Side is. It might, I mean, Someone's gonna know in chat. What is the other side as it relates to Malifaux? Malifaux being a skirmish game. Um, I don't know what the other side is, but this, these guys are actually kind of sick. Um, they're called electrocutioners. They have a lot of really cool electric bits on them. They're kind of top heavy, uh, which is always a nice hulking, uh, imposing uh, like 
model. I like it when they got like big shoulders and a big chest and big. Show arm. off the art on the paint cam. Oh. I feel like we are really punched in. What's going on here? I mean, I, I'm at max width right now, uh, but it's fine. Keep it out of what, because it's good for the painting. Is it true you're painting a space marine? Yes, I am. Uh, and you can see the STLs in the back here. Yeah, these guys are pretty nifty. Nine pre-assembled minis. What is this heresy? Hold on. Malifo has always been known for having the most heinous assembly process. But if these motherfuckers come assembled, bit, I'm curious what the. Wow, y'all, look at this. I thought these would be some board game looking models, but these are not. Can someone say in chat what this is? Love it when the box is only a theater render instead of a paint model. Yeah, no kidding, right? The other side is the larger scale war game I backed it on Kickstarter the, uh, back in the day. It uh, takes place on Earth where Malifo takes place through the breaches in the dark world. Okay. The other game was a war game style of Malifo. What? So to me, Malifo is a war game. Uh, Tomo5600. Zero, zero. Look at these models though, y'all. This is pre-assembled. This is, pre this is, as far as I can tell, this is typical Malifo plastic. It looks fucking glorious and some Poor, unfortunate uh, bastard had to put this together and scrape all the mold lines off. Um, I'm still, I'm still seeing a little bit of mold line, but this is, I mean, like this is amazing. Uh, there are some, there, okay, there are some areas where it's obvious that they, they came off the sprue, like right here on the shoulder. So some cleanup required, but no, so, uh, no bullshit gluing the tubes in place. No, none of that. This is incredible. They're P this is PVC plastic? My On God. the TV? On the TV. This is incredible, honestly. Looks a bit sturdier than the ones I got from the chaos. Ma, they put the models together. <laughs> Saying I have to show my first ever video right now. Nice, Tomo. Good luck. Don't don't put too much pressure on, your, on yourself. Any relation to electrician, as in like the character from Heroes of New Earth Huddleston? Are you doing a deep cut right now? Um, hey These Scott. are electrocutioners, and I'm clicking starting the giveaway right now. Okay. Exclamation mark moist to enter. If you're if you're in a country that allows giveaways, if you're in a country that doesn't allow giveaways, please don't enter. Yes. Thank you. Exclamation mark moist in the chat. There are ten of these dudes in the box. Looks like ten or nine. Nine seems like a weird amount. One, two, three. Yeah, there's nine. What the fuck? Um, but yeah, they are incredible, pretty simple models. Not gonna lie. From the other side, which is the larger scale miniature war game from Weird, Weird, the company that makes uh, Malifo, W-Y-R-D. Um, cool, I didn't know they were pretty simple. That's actually pretty sick. I'm starting our next giveaway. We're already about five towards it, so. I'm, I'm God darn you. Doing it. We're giving away those classic Eldar that I pulled out. Excellent. Those uh, electri electrocutioners, electrocutioners are like standard miniature scale, right, Scott? 32-ish mil? Yes. Maybe a little bit taller, a little bit more imposing, um, but I'm not sure what the scale of the game is supposed to be. All right. So there you go. Giveaway runs for another 18 minutes. Exclamation mark moist in the chat. If you're in an area that allows for giveaways, go for it. Just got to be a follower of the channel. Don't got to be a subscriber or anything like that. That's just to make sure that I can send you a message saying, hey, where are we sending this thing? Mammy Khan's asking, why am I painting a space wolf? Um, it's for the last episode of Evie Metal Marines. Um, and it's the last chapter, that I, well, the last big chapter that I haven't touched yet, which is space wolves. Um, I'm painting a conversion from Battle Bjorn, uh, who just makes wonderful space wolf conversions. And also has a Patreon, if you wanted to learn how to Sculpt sexy uh, space wolves along with him. Pimping the Patreon right now in the chat. Pimping it. Yeah, I saw these when they came in here a couple months ago. Seven years ago. Eons ago. Yeah. And they're pretty sharp. Yeah. JJ Waterboy subscribing at tier one. Five months. Mm, Let's damn. go. Wait, what? Wait. 
Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. Got it. Thank you, JJ Waterboy. <laughs> What are the shipping restrictions? There are none. The only restriction is that we ask that you uh, only enter if you're in a country that doesn't consider Twitch giveaways or just giveaways in general to be gambling, because that'd be illegal for me to be doing right now. Yep. Um, we don't require you to be a sub to uh, enter into the giveaway, just that you follow the channel, which is a free thing. Most people consider that to be uh, not gambling, but there are some weirdos out there. Livid code, thanks for the prime sub. You guys are coming in hot with the subs. Are you going 13th company? Yes, it's a 13th company conversion. And because uh, uh, you got kind of like, you got some chaos -y bits on there. That shoulder pad is chaos -y. Uh, I would say the knife is a little chaos -y too. No gun, you know, I realize there's no gun in this guy. And I fucking love that. It's, it's coming down, it's just gonna destroy you. I love it. So I'm picking up contrast paints for utility purposes. What are some suggestions in color? Uh, I would guess, I would get Templar, black Templar is a, a good one to have. Um, for utility, I would pick like blacks and browns. Um, those seem to be the most valuable uh, colors <clears throat> for generic purposes. Um, now we're just adding little uh, circles around the rivets. Um, Valbjorn likes to add uh, tiny little um, beads, maybe nail art beads. I think they're actually metal um, to the models just to give it a little extra, a little extra detail. Alamo six. Six months subscribed. Hey, I like how that works out. Yeah. Yes. Roar. I'm going to have to definitely go through this again and fix up some of these things. Did I lose a bet? No, I'm just I'm just finishing up a commitment that I made a long time ago. Not dying. Well, I mean you are. <laughs> We're all dying. That's yeah. True. Uh, Not any faster than normal. That's what matters. <laughs> Ambicon says up my painting a lot. Glad to hear it, man. Thank you. I appreciate the compliment. Spatsnet, subscribe. Thanks, Spatsnet. Greetings from Finland. Wait a minute. That's not a Night Lord Space Marine. Who are you? What'd you do with Scott? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, definitely gonna need some fixing up around this hair. The hair is not as defined as a crispy GW model, so I'm gonna have to really nurse that part of the model. It's interesting, I was thinking about the heavy metal box art as I was doing my years of glaze shading toward the bottom of armor panels, which you can barely see. And that's kind of intentional because like they really they they really do a good job of getting out of the way of the model, but still painting it in such a way that it makes the model look amazing. Like whenever I, maybe and maybe it's because we're all just used to GW box arts at, at this point, and so no one ever comments on the paint job. But whenever a new model comes out, the comment is always about how cool the mini is, not about um, how good the paint job is. And so they do a, a fantastic job of getting out of the way of the sculpt, such that the sculpt is the highlight, but the paint job is really only there as an assist. Uh, an Omega assist, it's an amazing uh, uh, aid to visually understanding the sculpt, um, but they do it in such a way where it doesn't take attention away, um, which is incredible. It's like, uh, it's, it's, just, it's the most delicate touch in painting that I've come across. It's funny, you, you bring up one of my few complaints about the box art when talking about that. Yeah. Uh, for Space Marines and stuff, I completely agree, but they do one thing that does change what you would think about the sculpt on some things, which is when they add stripes to animals, like when they tiger oh. stripe like griff hounds and stuff. Yeah, sure, sure. And it, it doesn't necessarily hide what the model is shaped like, but it could give someone the wrong impression that there are sculpted in stripes to work with. Yeah. That, like fur and stuff is also just something that you pick up with highlights. Would you prefer them not to do that? Probably. Um, I, I would prefer the creatures to be painted more like lions than tigers, but 
the tiger paint jobs are really cool, so I can't complain that much. Gotcha. Can you recommend some good brushes? Is that not the command? Um, I feel like that should be a command. Maybe it's because I replied. That's uh, why. There you go. Those are some brushes that I recommend. Yeah, as a thought. It shows up in other places, but that's like an example of it. Where, where a free handed on pattern gives you an idea about the mini that isn't actually in the sculpt. The water cup epic. Thank you, Pixel D Art. Um, on a similar note, are Broken Toad done? I I think they are. I think that we're not gonna, well, at least for now. Obviously, I can't read the future. I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. But for now, they seem to be struggling right now. Playing Dota and simultaneously watching. Dude, how do you do that? I feel like when I play Dota, the only thing I can do is play Dota. It's like so complicated. The game is just too fucking hard. But I, I do need to play some because we did get that new hero. He just is standing in top lane and constant pushing, auto attacking. There it is. Why are you feeding? I'm watching Scott stream. <laughs> um, some may ask why I'm mixing in a contrast paint into my acrylic paint. And it's just because it does the same thing that water does, but without um, reducing the opacity of the paint. I'm basically using brown water to thin my brown paint. And it's still very, very rich and potent so that my uh, thin uh, recess shades are very dark. I don't gotta redo them. And also there's a bit of surfactant in contrast paint. It's the stuff that helps washes operate like they do. Collecting in the recesses as opposed to collecting uh, just on the flats. And that helps to have paint sink into the recess as well. So it, it, it's pulling double duty right now. Properties. It's the final space marine. Nice. Would you ever consider playing games on stream? Uh, Kara, what'd you try today, Kara? You tried thinning with, with contrast paint? Um, would you consider playing games on you mean like You mean like miniature war games? Because I got some news for you, bro. We play miniature war games on stream uh, first and third Thursday of the month. Um, it's true. We did it last week. We did. We also... Um, uh, what am I trying to say? We also put the VODs on YouTube. If you go to uh, MiniX Backlog on YouTube, you can see all the gaming videos we've done. I've also played video games every now and then on the stream, but that's much less regular. <sighs> Would adding contrast medium work as well, aside from losing pigmentation? I, I suppose it would work in some way, but if you're gonna do that, you might as well just like, use water and like uh, flow aid instead. But you gotta be careful with flow aid. Flow aid is very intense um, in terms of its, uh, in terms of like the surfactant properties you get from flow aid. You gotta use a very small amount. Okay, I didn't add any shading to the shoulder pad. Yet. I'm not sure. If I'm gonna, I don't know though. Maybe chat can help me out here. I know on this shoulder pad, I know on some shoulder pads you do company markings and on other ones you don't. But I know on this one I'm gonna do the red color uh, and stuff like that. But on this one, I'm thinking I'm just gonna keep it gray. Is that, is that lore accurate? The, uh, the left shoulder pad just being gray? Or can I add some color to it as well? Keep a bottle of diluted flow rate around. Yeah, 20 to one sounds about right. Uh, Thank you, Greenleaf Terrain Studio. I just got a haircut. I get a haircut once a month. Ah, glad to hear it, Kara. Yeah, it does work great. More accurate would not have a, yeah, okay, for sure. Crazy Vazy. In it, the left's just supposed to be the chapter emblem. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, at the Thoth, I listened to Terrible Certainty today, and I gotta say, I'm not the hugest fan of it. 
it just sometimes sometimes metal can just seem like especially thrash metal can just seem like thrash metal for the sake of it and it's like just kind of like annoying to listen to sometimes i was trying to figure out if i'm just a hater of old music but i also really enjoy okay that was gotta breathe um i also really enjoy uh morbid saint uh morbid saint's got one angel and that album sounds really rough but that album kind of comes together better for me than uh terrible certainty did um so yeah i don't know i don't know if it's just a me thing but i wasn't the hugest fan of terrible certainty but i'm still i'm still gonna run through all of creators discography though <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> when are you getting your tips touched up oh man we're, we're done with frosted tips <laughs> we don't need any more of those Yeah, that some of those edges are way too thick. Storming with menace. There, there was one or two songs that were bangers. I will admit that there was one that got my head bobbing a little bit. some more studs to paint here a good hack to painting studs instead of uh trying to do what i'm doing which is like paint a ring around them is you can just paint the whole little bead uh one color and then um come back in man, i really fucked that one up uh come back in with um uh the base coat color which in some cases is probably gonna be silver um, and then uh, just paint a little dot on top of the rivet. Um, and then you can just leave a little ring around the outside by not... Um... Oh. But yeah, if that makes any sense. Base coat the rivet and then do a little dot of silver on top, leaving some of the, that dark ring around the outside. Um, and then it'll uh, it'll appear like it's recess shaded without you needing to actually do it. Uh, yes, everyone needs to stand still. Is that a GW model? It's a converted GW model. Electioners. Here they are. Here they are. Ooh. 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 Yeah. They're going to. <laughs> Is that listed somewhere? Oh, okay, okay. I see what you're saying. Nice little crispy outlines there so far. A couple of mistakes that I need to come back in with gray and fix up. Oh, by the way, I am... The the scheme that I'm using for the armor, I, I, I changed it a very tiny amount, um, was found on a website called Evy Metal Archive. Um, Evan's mic is muted. No, it's not. Okay. Um, Heavy Metal Archive is a website that is maintained by uh, Infernal Paintbrush, Infernal something. I think it's just Infernal Paint. I could be wrong. Um, there it is. There's a website, and he kind of just—he's one of the previous box artists for Heavy Metal, uh, and he knows how these things are actually painted. And so I, I would have never used brown as a recess shade for gray, but I love how it kind of gives it a dingier look. Um, so yeah, Infernal Brush, AKA Dave. Dave indeed. Yeah, so he has that nice website that I'm referencing for uh, how to paint my dudes, my space marines. 
Yeah, if you just follow the paint list, you too can paint like a box artist from GW. Indeed. It's easy. That's all it takes. You just use those like seven different paints on the thing that it tells you to, and it'll look just like the box art. In this case, that is the truth, um, but it requires a certain degree of skill of execution. No, 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 no. You just buy those Citadel paints. Yes. Haven't you ever looked at the sign on the top of the paint rack? It's three steps. <laughs> Base coat, wash, highlight. Boom, done. Easy. Box art. Easy. Infernal Brush has a scheduled stream tomorrow. Cool. Very cool. Dip it, lick it, paint it. <laughs> You'd think a lot of people would stream paint would stream painting Space Marines, but it's quite rare to be honest, since everyone just avoids it. Uh, I wonder why they would avoid it. I mean, I know why I avoid it, but I'm a fucking hipster, so. I, hey I would understand. Um, yeah, I would, I would feel, I feel like that, that'd be the thing people would paint the most. Scott um, hated painting Space Marines before it was cool. Yeah. I was the original hater. Sometimes you just can't totally nail a recess and you kind of just got to shove your paintbrush in there and let, 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 let the lore do the work. Um, and that's okay. Because sometimes it's easier to fix an issue than it is to... Um, words. Uh, then get it right the first time. Because you're edgy. Exactly. Out of curiosity, Scott, why do you hate Space Marines? Um, Jesus, take the brush. Um, I hate Space Marines because they are faceless. They just make, make no claims about um, what they are or what they want to be. To me, it's very clear that GW uses the, uh, the medium of Space Marines to pander to its audience. It's like, oh, we, we, we've discovered that everyone likes these things. And so we're going to double down on them, more like infinity down on Space Marines and make a chapter for everybody in every color and every mood. It's just like, it's just, it's just, it, they're just faceless. They, just, they, they claim nothing. They say nothing. I like things that lean into what they are. And if you like it, that's fine. And if you don't, that's also fine. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my vibe. I like, I like things that make some kind of creative statement about what they are. And also, it's, it's just like... And I never like it when people pander. I don't like that either. And also, I'm a hipster. Like, legitimately, I, it's, it's, I don't know why I do it, but when something is, like, beloved by everyone, I just have a tendency to, like, want to go for something that's more off the beaten path. Um, so all those reasons. Let's pick our winner. All right. Frampo55. <laughs> Frampo, congratulations. Got to sound off in chat. Eon says, he's not faceless, he's got a face right there. Got me, dude. You got me. It's true. Also, I missed some uh, black stuff. The, the Don't worry, you got plenty of time to go back and get it. Yes. Like, uh, how many how many hours would you estimate Nevi Met or Marine takes? Uh, like, it can take any... I mean, it depends. I think the lighter colored ones are more challenging than... The darker colored ones, just because when you make a mistake with your uh, uh, like dark recess shade, it's much harder to fix. Um, and I would classify this Space Wolf as a lighter colored uh, one. Um, so it's probably going to take me 30 hours to do. Um, 20, 30 hours, somewhere in there. King Kong got nothing on Space Marines. And that is true. That's the other thing. is They're just fucking awesome. Like, they're just, they do everything the best. It's like, come on, guys. Seriously? Anyways, that's my shit. Hey, Scott, have you seen the Iron Within video on Warhammer Plus? It's actually quite good. It has some Drakari in it. I have not. I have not seen uh, anything on Warhammer Plus, unfortunately. I've seen Space Marine. That's it. So no gamble on whether Scott's going to finish this one today. I'll tell you right now. It ain't happening. I painted an heavy metal marine in three hours. <laughs> Easy. Easy. Um, well, Scott, your enthusiasm for Song of Ice and Fire has been enough to get this old historical gamer to start painting on some Stark Lannisters. That's awesome, dude. Glad to hear it. I hope you enjoy the game, because um, I really, I really enjoyed it. 
It's real good. It's real good. Hey guys, at I'm least painting, a seven out of ten. At least. Uh, Scott, I have some bad news for you about the popularity of vampires. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. At least vamp. See, the thing is, it's not just the the popularity of space prints that makes me hate them. It's also just like how um, they they make no claims about what they are. They're, they're just faceless. At least vampires take a side in the great moral battle. Um, I'm a Brathian from Song of Ice and Fire, but can anyone give me some Sam inspiration to find the right yellow? Um, I don't know much about yellow paint. I don't have like a preference, unfortunately. I mean, the right yellow is a very loaded thing to say because you can paint them however you want. All right, I think you're just looking for one that doesn't fight. Um, doesn't fight when you're trying to paint with it. Has good opacity. Well, it also depends on what you're after as far as like how quick you want to be done, what kind of shading you want, what kind of style you're painting in. Yeah. I do really like um, the Imperial Fist Yellow from the new C Contrast 2.0 range or whatever. That stuff is amazing yellow paint. Yeah, I've been hearing that stuff get a lot of love recently. I mean, it's it's not opaque you you're still putting it on over an undercoat but with an undercoat of white or pink that stuff is just like boom yeah and that might be a good solution if you want like a nice a nice quick result is uh using something like contrast paint or speed paint yep for sure but blood angels are vampire space marines right of course of course we got vampire space marines we got we got wolf space marines we got we got church space marines. Yeah, I, I think that that critique of space marines is very true. Is it's like we've got vanilla coke, we've got cherry coke, we got a coke with everything in it. Exactly. It's the coke freestyle thing. What's our faction identity? It's whatever you want it to be, baby. You're right. And of course, like I don't mind that. Um, for like you know sodas and beverages and stuff, but for like my fantasy armies and stuff like that, yeah, I want I want something to be a little bit more uh, characterful. All right, well, our winner has not sounded off in chat. Last call, Frampo fifty five. Frampo, we're saying your name, we're pinging you. If you don't sound off in chat, we got to pick another winner. Would it be canonically possible for them to add White Walkers to song? Probably, yeah. I think it'll happen at some point. It just won't be a player faction. Even women space marines. Exactly. Even bigger and badder space marines. A.K.A. Grey Knights. <laughs> McKay. Oh, I'm Frompo. Nice. Scott, why does Simon hate you? They nerfed your poor Grey Joys. I feel like they nerfed everybody. Mm. They're just like, you know, it's been a year since we changed this game at all. It's just like... Change it by like five percent. They buffed little, Lannister. Make it a little bit sadder, did they? I, I haven't looked at all the faction changes, but yeah, I think it'd have been cool. You know, one thing that Dota does that's really interesting, and one thing that games could do, and that actually GW does as well, um, with their GHB, is they spice the game up. They change the way the game is played uh, regularly, and that makes it kind of interesting because it's like, oh, okay, now I have some new stuff to kind of mess with. We. We haven't seen Song do that yet, where they will uh, change up the way the game is played a little, you know, kind of make some interesting game uh, play decisions. Uh, one kinda, one idea that had been floated by some locals was to uh, introduce, like, seasonal tactics boards, where you change what yeah. those zones do. Yeah, there you go. That, that would be a way to not to totally destroy the game um, and just kind of, like, uh, change up the strategies involved. All right, uh, picking a new win winner. It's... Mr. Manila Gorilla. Mr. Manila Gorilla? Yeah. Dude, the odds that I missed a, a, a recess are so insanely high. Winner, please talk. <laughs> Dota spices things up by moving a tree over three pixels. So that is true. We haven't gotten like a, a big <laughs> gameplay change in Dota in a while. But I mean like things like moving where Kong is or like moving, not Kong, uh, Roche. Uh, you know, moving where, uh, adding outposts to the game, adding Agshar to the game, um, stuff like that are ways to change the game in a significant way 
uh, to make it more exciting for the player base. This is ridiculous. Is no one is no one sounding off? That's what it seems like. Come on, Mr. Manila Gorilla. I know you're out there. You're probably sitting on a, on your toilet and you hear sound coming out of the speakers on your computer and you're yelling, No! No! Oh, wait for me! I'm gonna miss my giveaway! Here's a throwback, Jam. You remember radio station giveaways? Uh, I mean, they still do them. Yeah, but like, do you remember the era of radio station giveaways when people didn't have cell phones? So the idea of like being in your car during the afternoon drive and them announcing, hey, Cynthia Williams, you're our winner. You got 15 minutes to give us a call. You're stru- stuck in rush hour traffic and it's 1997 and you don't have a cell phone. <laughs> I've never had to deal with that before, um, but that does sound like a vibe. I never, I've won a giveaway of any kind. I've won like um, small, like secondary prizes at closed raffles. Uh, okay. You know, like uh, you go to like an airsoft game or whatever and they give away some patches and gear and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. sexy someday i'll win the powerball we're all bots set by chair for scott as what it is a volunteer's tribute not gonna lie i'm considering getting a 40k army since i have chaos demons and use it for aos and 40k but i want something different to be honest all right cool what do you like i don't play song of ice and fire until the tv series nudity is properly represented in the miniatures working <laughs> jay come on man jay well, look, they can't do that because uh it's it, they don't have the license for the TV show. They only have the license for the books. Jay, Jay, are you gonna go Adepticon? I'm sure you are. Are we gonna play a game? I have a fully painted kill team army, bro. I know you play that game a lot. Wasn't Scott like four in '97? In '97, I was five. Get it right, asshole. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I was five. I turn 35 tomorrow. Ooh, happy birthday. I'm pretty sure I die tomorrow. Dang. So it's your birthday. On March 7th. is a- Today's the 7th. You're right. It's Alex's birthday on March 18th. And it's yeah. my wife's birthday on March 19th. Uh, nice. Best wishes from Mexico. Thank you. People winning things. You know what? Okay, I, I did win something, but that was a video game competition. That wasn't, that wasn't a raffle. I mean, I've won... To tournaments and stuff like that before. January 1st, were you four or five? Uh, I'm, what? You think there needs to be more to that? There needs, there needs to be more to that question. Dude, let's kill team it up. I'll be there every day. Fuck yeah, dude. All right, I'll bring my kill team. I'm picking another winner. God Ridiculous. damn it, people. Don't you want free shit? All right, all right, all right. All right, let's see. Third time's the charm. J peso underscore four six four. The other challenging part about this paint job is because it was a conversion, it is fully assembled. And typically, if you've ever watched an Heavy Metal Marines episode, you'll notice that I uh, keep the head off, keep the gun off. And anything else that kind of gets in the way, uh, and that is not the case for this time. So it's a little bit harder to paint uh, because of that, but we, we'll, we'll be able to get a nice result regardless. Jay Peso! I think this is going to be the stream today. So I'm just going to pick a new winner every five minutes. Yeah, okay. And no one's going to be here. Looks like all the best people are born in March. My wife is March 20th. Nice. Same. Weird. Okay. Weird. That is weird. For all bots. All right. Now onto the backpack, which is just like the best collection of recesses to recess shade. You want a fucking practice recess shading? Grab a Space Marine Primaris backpack and just go to town. It has endless edges.
and also just tiny little rivets, little baby rivets. Chat, we haven't talked in a long time. My wife went to Florida for like a week and I watched 15 movies while she was gone, okay? Damn. It was epic. What was your favorite of the 15 movies? Oh, wow, what a question. I was, I just off top of my head, Color Out of Space was my favorite. I haven't seen that one. Um, Sounds pretentious. Uh, it is a horror Cthulhu, or not Cthulhu, I always mix up Cthulhu and who is like the author who like spawned that whole genre? Lovecraft. It's a very Lovecraftian story written by H.P. Lovecraft. That's his name, right? Yeah, H.P. Lovecraft. So a color of mind is a H.P. Lovecraft story. All right, what did I watch though? Oh, I see. More like this Mandy. Okay, got it. So it gets compared to Mandy a lot, but it's way more down to earth than Mandy was. Mandy was very, was very much so a visual experience. Um, yeah, but it's got Nicolas Cage in it, so it's like Mandy. That's how it works. Yes, exactly. No, but no, I really like that one. Oh man, fuck! I rewatched Carrie. I fucking love Carrie. But the I'm gonna say the best new movie I watched was definitely The Brood by David Cronenberg. That movie was fucking sick. I yeah, uh, Cronenberg is. I mean, he's a beast. He's a beast. I don't like all his movies. I, don't, I didn't like Videodrome uh, so much. Uh, really? I love that movie. Yeah. I don't know. I, I have to read my review for what, what I thought maybe the issue was. But man, fucking The Brood was so good. And it was on my, my book that I got a long time ago. A uh, hundred horror movies to watch before you die. Vesper. Oh, uh, am I going to see his newest movie? Uh, yes. I, I, that was one of the 15 movies. I watched Infinity Pool. Uh, that's Brandon Cronenberg, David's um, David's son. I didn't like Videodrome. No, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't huge on Videodrome. I have not seen Naked Lunch. Naked Lunch is that what it is? No, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, Naked Lunch is uh, is a trip. Hey, uh, Jay Pace, so four six four. Last call. I'm gonna pick another winner. We also got a sub from. Luck for Marie, Luca, Luca Marie. Thank you for the, uh, what's up? Infinity Pool did come out. I'm torn on seeing Infinity Pool or waiting for the inevitable X-rated cut. Oh, okay. See, that would have been interesting. I have not seen the X-rated cut. So the giveaway that we're trying to find a winner for already closed. However... When we get another uh, 38 subs, we're going to be giving away a box of classic Eldar. Have you seen the absolute horror classic Pinhead? <laughs> we already discussed this, Jay. <laughs> Do I have to make you feel bad again? Pinhead. All right, new winner. This time's the charm. The Cold are, hard socks. Why don't we just, if this happens again, just redo the giveaway and make the uh, winner draw like I don't know, like 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 two minutes. But yeah, we'll do that. Hey, again. cold hard socks says I exist. Hey, we I still it. function. We All right, it. Uh, let me send you a message here. Jay, you're going to have to teach me how to play Kill Team again. Because I played it like two times and I'm trash at it. I'm not trash at it. I just don't really know how to play. So I am trash at it. All right, Cold Heart Sox. I sent you a message saying what I need, but I'll tell it to you in words too. Send us a message with your name, your address, and your email address, and we'll get these electioners. God, that's really annoying to say. Uh, we'll get these electioners out to you, and you can clean them up and paint them. Post them on the Discord. That's what I would say. If you're not in the Discord, that means you need to get subscribed. Yes, as a Twitch subscriber, you get access to uh, my Discord server, and we have like a fun quarterly challenge going on right now. 
that involves creating a diorama from a scene that you like from a movie or a TV show or pop culture in general. You get extra bonus points for the Maniac Painting uh, Challenge when you complete one of those um, words, one of those challenges. Um, are you watching T-L-O-U? I don't know what that is. The Last of Us. Oh, no, I haven't seen the video game, so I decided to not watch the uh, the show. Crowns Nevermore, thanks to the Prime sub. I feel like the show might be better if you have no familiar with familiarity with the games. Oh, maybe, okay. If that's the case, I know Curtis really likes the TV show. Um, it, it might be the best adaptation of anything I've ever seen. I didn't play the game. Um, I've watched a substantial portion of it, but they actually were like, hey, you were the head writer on the game. Why don't you be the showrunner and the main producer and writer of the show? And it's fantastic because it isn't doing what a lot of uh, TV, TV ap adaptations have done recently where they hire a writer who goes, ah, well, I don't want to feel that constrained, so I'm just going to basically write my own stuff and then slap the brand on here. Like the Halo TV show and things like that do. Yeah, that feels a little scummy. Derby Dewey says, I have co-workers that love the show and they're 40-year-old women that have no knowledge about video games. Yeah. Nice, okay. It's It seems like fans of the game love the show. Fans of good HBO shows love the show. Okay. Which is a winning combo. Then I will. I'll, I'll put it on the list. We're me and Amber are slowly making our way through House of the Dragon and enjoying it. I knew I would get some reactions to chat by bringing up the Halo catastrophe. The Don't Halo. worry, they're making a second season, guys. I'm sure it'll be better. The Halo TV show makes me violent. <laughs> it's so bad. The Last of Us is kind of doing for zombie slash video game plots the same thing that Game of Thrones did for fantasy plots. I assume as a thought. Yeah, I, I think that that's basically true. I wasn't very into Game of Thrones, but I imagine that the same reasons are not going to be found in uh, The Last of Us. Yeah, there's not a lot of overlap between the two. Yeah. I, don't, I can't even really remember why Game of Thrones didn't grab me very much. I should rewatch the first season for the third time. I, I tried to rewatch it. I told you about this a few months ago. Pro probably about the, around the time of Gen Con. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm super into the game. Maybe I should, like, finally finish the show. Because back in the day, when I first moved back here from Iowa... I uh, watched the first three seasons, and I was really excited to watch the fourth season. I never watched another episode. So I was like, all right, I'll revisit it. And I watched the first two episodes, and then I was like, I don't want to waste my time with this. I hate all these people. Okay, so that was it. That's, that's what it was, no likable characters? I, it's They were all well characterized, but like, there are very few characters in that show, not enough to make me bond with because I just want awful things to happen to them but I don't want to watch those awful things happen because it just makes me feel bad <laughs> okay Interesting. particularly early on where it's like there are two characters that are both complex and good oh boy there's a lot of did it say did it say things I can't see it it's behind the words challenger. um I can't read it it's tiny something about moving into the new house I'm gonna assume that it was uh who is that that just moved into the new house? Was that Miniatorium? Damn, dude. See, I told you the <laughs> thing works. Yeah, works now. <laughs> okay, OSW Zinkiki. Say the message again in chat. Zinkiki says, bought a new house and needed a cutting mat for my new workspace. Well, you're in luck because that Miniac cutting mat is about as good as a cutting mat could ever get. Ever. It's chonky, it's thick, it's got really bold colored lines, mm. and it's got both types of measurements on it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Self-healing, I don't really know what that means. No, that means that a cut will close up um, around it when you kind of slice through it. Uh, I think, uh, I 
think uh, Jay had a take on Game of Thrones that I slightly agree with. It didn't feel enough like um, it didn't feel enough like fantasy, the Game of Thrones TV show. It just was kind of like a bunch of mean people being angry to each other. Yeah, I mean that's true. But you know, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily mind that. I don't know. It's hard to say. Look at these little chains. They're so itty bitty. TJB Dev did Magnus. I can't see the rest. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's super tiny for me too. What? Why is it like this? Little chains off the chart. I agree. Hey, can we time out to cry some more, please? Whoa. Yes, it's uh, did Magnus do anything wrong? Nice. That's a question that people ask about 40K stuff. Oh, okay. We are well-known 40K experts here. We are. Uh, we'll do a little recess shade along the back of the backpack here where it meets the fur, the fur pelt. That's the real reason, by the way, everyone. The real reason that Scott hates Age of Sigmar, which he put out a video about that is just him saying he hates Age of Sigmar, is because he hates that it takes precious GW resources away from his favorite game, 40K. 40K, yes. He wishes that GW would stop wasting their time on all these other products like Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game and Kill Team and just make more 40K. Yeah. All of this is true. I want more Space Marine Traptors. Okay, I think I hit every recess other than the ones that are like ridiculous to do, like under the knife and stuff like that. I'm just not gonna worry about them. You're never gonna see them in the videos. I don't really care. Uh, it is killing me inside that they are not done, but that's okay. We don't need to worry about them. You got to think about how he's going to look on a spinning platter, Scott. Exactly. Which we're actually going to discover right now. We go take some shots. Oh. Hey, Scott. Or hey, Maniac. Are you still sending the brush coffin things? No, I'm actually just taking your money and I'm running. I'm out of here. No, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I can't, can't sit on that joke for a while. Um, yes, absolutely. We're doing them. They're actually already all done and in the fulfillment centers. Um, uh, we're just waiting on the models to be done being casted. The 75s are all done. The 32s are in process right now. Just put out an update actually this morning. You can read about more uh, more details about the uh, campaign and where everything is at in terms of its uh, development. I'm pretty sure that's basically the last thing, right? Is it that is. The 32 mils needed to be redone. Redone, yeah. Um, not recasted. Just the 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 three the master prints redone, and then the casting happened a after that. Um, there's some things slowing down my casting company that are internal to them um, that they didn't want to share. Um, so yeah, that uh, that's going along. I think uh, I didn't mention this in the update, um, but every resin recaster I've ever employed has always failed me, um, which sounds harsh, but it's true. Like they always miss deadlines like incredibly, and I didn't. I'm not like doing Kickstarter with all of them. Some of them is just like trying to like keep up stock for my, the duchess and they all they all kind of have their own all their own problems you know what i did mention this i did, I did mention this in the update um so yeah either i'm asking too much of my resident recasters or it's just uh um or it's like a really challenging field to work in one of the one of the two scott needs to play star wars legion and have alex davy teach him that sounds like a lot of fun uh, Are they coming to your shop soon then? Who who is they? The classes are the last thing. Yeah, we're also we're also doing that right now. Alex just left. He's been working on that all day. Have I seen the new Shatterpoint minis? I have. And particularly the new Ranger course. Yes, that's the most important one, honestly. All right, um, I have to shoot some uh, B-roll of this 
Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll just, I'll, I'll clean up. Yeah, we'll clean up first. Okay, so the color to use for cleanup is a, a one to one mixture of administratum gray and dawnstone. <laughs> so this is the kind of thing that I would never get right with a GW recipe if I was trying to guess. You, you take a, a lighter gray and you take a little bit of darker gray and you mix them together, and that's your base coat. It's like, seriously, you couldn't just fucking pick one? <laughs> nope. You should ask Spira Mirabilis for his resin supplier. And I meant the brush coffin. I missed the Kickstarter. Oh, yeah, that'll come out. That'll come out soon. Oh, it'll come out whenever the Kickstarter is dumping. So. The real question is, when are you going to get a Siocast machine? I think the, the problem is, is that everything requires a heavy amount of learning and, and tinkering and messing with. and. If I were to ever do any kind of casting in-house, whether that's plastic injection molding, <laughs> resin casting, or sio cast, it would just, it would require me to hire somebody, which I don't think we're there yet. It would be pretty cool to have a sio cast machine here. It would be cooler to have a sio cast machine that works. But I'm sure if we got one, it would just sit there and look pretty for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing me. Yeah, maybe. Because everything I've heard about SioCast is that, you know, it, it is challenging to use. It's not like just free casting. You still have to learn how to mess with the, the that medium and, and what it wants and stuff like that. I mean, it is still definitely injection molding. Yeah. It's just slightly more approachable, and the molds are much cheaper to make than traditional... Uh, bazillion PSI casting. Metal molds. Yeah. Um, DeKratzberg asks, Miniac, I've been interested in getting into Song of Ice and Fire. My only reservation is Simon. Do they not have a history of not supporting their games in the long run? So, they did have that thing with Dark Age where they stopped supporting it. Um, but I don't know. I think that they did support it for a very long time. And I think they kind of just let it go because it was not very popular. I don't know much about Dark Age. There's that in Wrath of Kings, which is not to be mistaken with Kings of War. Kings of War? Yeah, you got it. The Mantic one's called Kings of War. Yeah. The Simon one's called Wrath of Kings. Was called Wrath of Kings. Was called Wrath of Kings. Wrath of Kings and Dark Age. That was basically like their warmer fantasy and 40k versions. They had two large-scale figure games, a fantasy one and a sci-fi one, but they were totally different than uh, 40k and um, Age of Sigmar. Yeah, it was just the sort of thing of we have to have a fantasy game and we have to have a sci-fi game. Exactly. Yeah, like, there was like a precedent set. Yeah. Um, and they. That's and they just fought. what's done. Right. But yeah, aesthetically they were very different, which I uh, I really appreciated. I like how they. Uh, Went for something totally different. Um, so yeah, if if uh, if you're concerned about that, they definitely stopped supporting um, those games at some point. Uh, However, big caveat here: Song of Ice and Fire is seven years old now, and they're still cranking out stuff for it. Uh, I I know some details about upcoming plans. And I know that this year will be similar to last year as far as volume of releases. Last year they released like 30 or 40 things, I tabulated a list, and I know that there's a few things coming up soon, and there's more stuff in the pipe, like they've got plans. They are not abandoning it anytime soon. At the beginning of last year, people were like, are they gonna abandon this game? And uh, then several starters in a million different unit boxes came out, and then people were like, does that mean they're gonna abandon this game? So I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, probably won't happen. Um, but honestly, even if it does, like, I don't know, everything comes to an end, and I got a lot of entertainment out of it. But I understand as someone who is like looking to get into it, that's a very reasonable question to ask. Um, do you have a favorite mini STL designer for 3D printing? Um, you know, I hate to say it because their supports just gave me so much fucking issue, but Last Sword really does kill it. 
Uh, Last Sword is good. Um, there's another one that starts with the G. It's like uh, Galad. Galad. That one's pretty damn good. Um, and then the other one that I really like is called Highland Miniatures. Those are my favorite ones, I think. Albert, Albert Moreno Font. I'm sorry if I butchered the shit out of your name. Um, look at this fucking guy. Yo, you guys ever want to totally give up on painting because uh, there's someone out there who is like way better than you? Look at this guy's uh, Instagram. If you can drop Albert, Albert Moreno Font's Instagram, which is just his name in the channel. Everyone can go just look at that and just love it. He has amazing painting examples. He is so good. Oh, what up? Yeah, there, there, there are the links that I mentioned for the various um, uh, 3D printable uh, things. STL makers. Well, that's cool, Super Gamer Boys. I didn't know that. All right. Okay, I need to fix up some of these recess shades so they're crisp. Oh, uh, what is Azathoth asking? I don't know, but I just got rid of your chat. Here we go. Here's a question, perhaps better suited for Tub. What frequency do you think gaming companies should release new editions? Would it be too slow to consider still supporting? What is too slow to consider still supporting? What is too fast for players to actually keep up? So An update every week. There's like, I don't know. That's a that's a very interesting question. There are like two kinds of changes. There's changing the rule set, and then also like changing the season. I feel like those are two distinguishing things we can talk about. Honestly, once you find like the right system, I don't think I need any changes to the rules ever again. Like I don't think Guild Ball really needed to be changed at all. I really enjoyed that. But like changing like like doing some balance changes. But like what I want to see is changing the way the game is played. Like in, a, in like a like we were discussing before, um, where like you you know a new tactics board in Song of Ice and Fire or like the GHB. Like those are very interesting gameplay changes, and I want to see those. Once a year, twice a year, twice a year, twice a year sounds good. I haven't checked out Conquest yet, but we are we're we're looking to do it. It's on the list. It's looking like what's next on the list here is uh, um, Warcry. <clears throat> um. Frequency of updates. That's a deep question. Deep. Deep. Certainly, whatever answer that you give, there's going to be some portion of the player base that says, but I just bought this thing and you're making it outdated. Like Song of Ice and Fire went a little over a year without an update, just with model releases, and then the update came out. And there were quite a few posts on the Facebook posts that were like, hey, but... SO one only came out a year ago. Why are we doing this again? So you'll never make that crowd happy. Yeah. In my opinion. I think I think part of it comes down to just like not having physical assets for your cards and just making them all digital. And so they don't even know the changes are happening when they happen. They just go to the app, open it up, and it's like, oh, okay, this is a little bit different. So it's like you make it very easy for them. Yeah. But then again, I understand like not wanting to deal with that and I it's just it's a it's a hard thing to manage, right? I prefer physical assets and cards and shit as well, but like it makes the game so much harder to like change, uh, having to reprint that shit. Well, the key thing I think, if if I was going to design a game like Song, uh, I think physical cards are great, but I don't think you should put them in the boxes with the units, because what we see all the time with that game and many others for that matter, is that people will buy the thing and they go sweet here's the card in the box but that card is like three years old like the two-player starter they haven't done another print run of the two-player starter since like version 1.4 of the game the rule book and the unit cards in there are like three or four years old at this point they have very little connection to the uh game as it's played now and so very often we'll see new players come onto the discord or facebook groups and say 
hey, how does this rule work? And it's like not even something that exists in the game anymore. You know, it's like old school uh, Song of Ice and Fire panic tests. It was oh the number God, you failed yeah. by. Oh and that's gosh. like the rule book that's in the two player starter. And people are like, that's not how it works. You roll a D3. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's that stuff. Um, if if it wasn't in there and it just said, hey, you can you can buy print on demand at this URL. You just open the box and you go, sweet. Or even use this code to get your print on demand cards that are up to date. Thank you for purchasing this product. Yeah. Yeah, Rufus is on the same page as me. You got there. Um, yeah, that's nice. Um, as a thought, says that twice a year for seasonal changes is too often, and, and there's definitely you definitely might be right about that. Because um, while you can sit down and play Dota five times an evening, it's very easy. Uh, you can't do that for a miniature war game, and so the odds that you get bored of a rule set are probably less likely, or this they happen less frequently. And so you can you can enjoy a rule set for longer. So maybe a year is long enough for like a season. I think I think you do a a big update on the year mark, and you do a little update on the six month mark. Yeah, I don't mind little little uh, balance changes. Oh yeah yeah like yeah. And I'm, I'm putting that aside. Obviously, if there's stuff that's problem in competitive play or things like that where you just need to tweak something, just do it. Yeah. But like for the GHB. Um, for, for Age of Sigmar, instead of releasing a whole new one every six months, I feel like they should release the, the big one that has like the seasonal rules and all that stuff once a year, and then a little update pack that just includes like, hey, you play this game every week and you want some new battle plans or some different battle tactics, here's the season expansion. Yeah, some different enhancements for your characters. Right, exactly, but it's like, if you if you only play once a month, the the GHB is fine. Everything you need is in there. You buy one a year. Uh, I'm gonna record a little bit. I don't know if this is gonna affect the stream at all. For my for me, it 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 drops the frame rate. Yeah, the frame rate drops for the stream as well. I don't know why that happens. Is the frame rate good on the recording? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. challenging part about trying to make modifications to this subtly blended kneecap is I'm trying to add some highlight and now I have this issue where I just created a hole in the paint job and I'll turn off the stream so you can see it better. Um, I created this hole where I put down this bright paint originally and then I try to come back in with a wet blend to pull some eschen gray, a darker gray, into this like uh, lower part of the knee pad. And then I ripped out some of the paint and created a little circle. So now I gotta try to fix that. Eh. What is my favorite kit bash I've ever done? Oh. And what's the most practical? Interesting question. Um, I think... Ooh. I kind of want to just say my Blood Knights. Like, I really like that conversion a lot. I think they they were really nice. Um, but I don't know if those were, like, practical. Um, it's hard to say. Practical models for a practical man. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to have to nurse that a bit more. since you literally couldn't buy them. You could buy them, they're just wildly expensive. Hey, being the guy who has to tell a very casual player in my kill team league that the various abilities for his factions have been nerfed. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get, yeah, I totally get that. It's just like, yeah, when you're playing someone for the first time and they're like, got the cards out and I'm recording again, so stream just so you know, that's why the frame rate's dropping. Um, and then they're kind of like, 
yeah, that happens at song night every now and then when like we have to get like we have to get a new player set up with their actual cards is because they're using out to date out of date stuff. Yep. I mean that's always the disparity between a uh, newer player and a more advanced player too, because the the person that's played the fifty one hundred games whatever is going to know the interactions a lot better than the new player. Mm -hmm. I thought it worked this way. Wrong. You're wrong. Yes. I haven't done a lot of kit bashes. Um, I worked on that one strange wizard kit bash that I used uh, a limited edition guild ball model for that long, long time ago. Actually, also my first ever sponsored video, that video. Um, That's fun. Yeah. All right. Recording turned off. Yeah, I remember that uh, CMDE uh, when I uh, would play Warhammer, I'd write my list down on a piece of paper. I have lists, uh, I think, still written from from back in the day, and uh, you could just like you know start at the top with your lords and your heroes, and kind of go down from there. Are there any war games that have more of a casual feel, like no big rule book and complex interactions and and stats? Um, Having just read, and people keep mentioning Ian's Battle, and I'm sorry if I'm not re replying. Um, I would love to play Ian's Battle. Sorry, not Ian's Battle. I would love to play, um, fuck, Age of Fantasy, One Page Rules, OPR. Um, yes, I was confusing uh, two different um, three letter acronyms. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say Age of Fantasy is definitely how you're describing it um, because. Um, I don't know the game. I don't know if the game has enough legs to like want to play it forever. Uh, we haven't played it yet, of course, um, but it has a very wonderful hero building system in it. It's that, on the list. That is uh, very diverse and very very fun. Um, but I would say that of the of the rules that I've read and also games I've played, I would say definitely one page rules. From what I know about uh, God Tier, that's a pretty straightforward game because its list building is super straightforward. That is true. I don't know if it's straight. I don't know if the game is straightforward, though. Maybe, but uh, my my point is, it's like a war game that doesn't have a ton of complicated interactions. It's relatively limited because the list building is so fixed, and there's only so many things in the game. But yeah, it is still you know a war game. But I mean, board games are pretty complicated too. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. Dark Tide minis. Gifting a sub to Shub Shikomi. Thank you, Dark Tide Minis, for the gift of the sub. I really want to play one page rules. Me too. Most random question What's your go to order of canes? Easy. It's a three finger piece with the uh, bread bob style and also the fries extra crispy. Easy. God tier shines in 3v3. The only issue I have with, with God tier, but I would love to play it. Like it, it's, it was the game that was supposed to replace Guild Ball. The only issue, and I've stated it before, um, is just that you, the way you pick an army is by picking some number of war bands um, and putting them together. Whether it's two, whether it's three, like the person in chat said, uh, the game shines at Couch Frog, um, and I am a gamer. Okay, I want to win the game, and so I want to make the choice that's best for the strategy that I'm trying to implement. And the issue is that you're picking three or two warbands that are aesthetically not linked at all. Some do line up. There are some that would work together aesthetically, but in my gamer brain, if those weren't the right choices to make, I'm not going to pick them. But if I don't pick them and I end up with a war band that just, I don't want to run elves and orcs together, even if it works, you know? I just don't, I just don't like that. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't like space brains because they have no character, they have no identity. 
Scott can't let go of the war game aspect of I want my army to look like this to embrace the Dota aspect of I'm picking heroes for my team. Exactly. So a, he a Dota team does not have any aesthetic linking it at all. Yeah. But I just don't think that way when I think about uh, war games. I, I think very much still about the art involved in, uh, in like, you know, crafting your, your army and painting it and shit like that. I want it to all look and feel the same. Uh, I guess the best way to think about it and not get caught in that is one is a army game where they're all under a banner and the other one is a game of heroes where it is specific champions on the field fighting for a cause. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, sorry. Bob Styles, butter on both sides. Check out. Check out us there. Disgusting. Disgusting. Tomo says, I think I just finished my talking headshots, as John would say. I knew it'd be tough, but damn, Scott, how you do this so much? Um, what's helpful is a teleprompter. Uh, I've been using that lately. Uh, it helps that I have to repeat lines so much. Game of Heroes is a great way to describe it. MCP has that problem as well. You know, MCP does have that problem, and I also dislike it in that game as well. But you can still make a, a list of like bad guys and it feels better, but it's still a problem. You're right. Well, MCP has that functionality built into it to some degree, though, where it's like they have, I can't remember what they call them, factions or alliances or whatever, where you are rewarded by sticking with the thematic thing because they'll have abilities that key off of like things from that. Yeah. You know, the Brotherhood of Mutants look for other Brotherhood of Mutants on their leader cards. Affiliations, thank you. I'm glad I can't hear the sadness in Scott's voice right now. Yeah, because of the Han reference. Still a fun game though. I bet it is. I've only played the game as a demo two times. And if I'm being totally honest, I uh, was definitely in a different place mentally both times. And so I remember nothing about the game, uh, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Cause I, I, can't, I can't speak to it at all. And I played it literally two times. Um, so I want to try it again. And I have a set. Uh, I'm going to grab it so you guys can see what it looks like. You get a feel for the models too. We can bust out one. One of these factions is actually a faction. Actually, both of them I love aesthetically. Um, um, this one. Uh, and it's got kind of like ninja elves. Oops, wrong side. Ninja elves and then kind of like more heavily armored dudes in it. Um, yeah, I like the look of both of these factions. You can actually play it in 60 minutes, unlike A Song of Ice and Fire. That's true. It is more of a kind of like, because there's less figures, the, the play mat is smaller. All those things help to get the game done fast. Rogue Elves versus Human Mercs slash Heavy Soldiers. Surely they have an actual name. So the way this game works out is you have one larger character that's kind of like an avatar um, for your faction. A little bit soft in the casting. Um, you know, it definitely has that vibe where it's like, oh man, the concept art look really cool, but the model is kind of not there fully. I think it has to do with the limbs and all the details being very thin and not tapered at all. Like it just seems like one long leg, one long forearm, one long shoulder, um, one long, you know, bicep. One, and they all kind of just like, there's no tapering, there's no interesting shapes. It's kind of just very thin. So you got one big guy and then you have some amount of smaller guys um and just get a size comparison it's, it's almost like half the size no not size it's more like 60 percent um so yeah and then you take t you take two or three war bands and you mash them together here's a here's, here's one of those heavily armored merc dudes compared with his bigger bro avatar avatar um yeah some of the you know, like they've got a smattering of the boxes over at the source and I've looked at them quite a few times and some of them are pretty cool and other ones are, I would never consider buying this to paint it. <laughs> There's a lot of, lot of room in that game between the like, man, this is a cool little box and the other ones. Yeah. 
Hey Scott, when's the next game with Curtis? I want to double my channel points again. <laughs> Rude. Uh, Sensari. Sensari. Thank you for the prime sub. I don't know what the betting line was on you and me. Oh, like what the percent is? Oh yeah, here we go. I've got it. More people bet on me than you. Wow. 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 It's that dragon. It's that dragon lean. Killing everybody. Rufus bet 60k on you. Fool. And you had a total of 81k bet on you. Lol. Okay, so it was all just Rufus. Uh, yeah, it was 12 on your side, 20 on my side. Dragon's OP. <laughs> Scott, you should be in a Vampire Blood Bowl team. There is no GW team at the moment, but a lot of third-party options that are great. Yeah, maybe. I, I do have a uh, the Athalorn Avengers at the moment, and I'm, I'm kind of hyped to paint them. Evan, now you got me scared that my camera's recording at a low frame rate. That's never happened before, but I'm still gonna check. But it could happen, and that would yeah. be bad. That'd be very bad. It'd be very fucking bad. I basically have, we would have painted a model that I can't make a video out of for like seven days, which is not okay. All right, let me just check. Let me go to the face cam instead of making people suffer. Oh yeah, I have to pull the, oh no, wait. Yeah, I'm gonna pull this out for a second. It's all right, when you went into the menus and stuff, that killed it anyway, so. Okay. Yeah, that looks good, that looks good. All right, cool. It's fine, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Ev Memories isn't canceled. Like I said, it's my fault you won. <laughs> right, because you curse anyone you, uh, that you uh, uh, bet on, is that it? Ampersand D-Monkey frame rate cannot be fixed if broken. Well, yeah, I think, I think what we're trying to say is that if I recorded the painting at 15 FPS, like there's no way I'm getting that data back. <laughs> you just Lost. use AI interpolation. Yes. Use the smoothing like on your TV when you're watching the sports and you want it to be at the 120 hertz. The TV. It makes my football look all smooth. Like my brain. Frame interpolation is a superpower. <laughs> How many days would you estimate it takes to make the average Miniac video start to finish? Probably like nine, 10 days, uh, working days. So like not including weekends. I don't work on the weekends, generally speaking, unless I have to finish something for a, a deadline. But yeah, probably like 10, 10 days of 40, 50 hour work weeks. It depends, like uh, the AOS one, I just it went faster because it didn't involve painting a model. This is going to be one of the longer ones, just because um, it's, it involves painting, uh, but also it's a more of an arduous task, more of an arduous paint job, less of a simple one. I have a couple of complicated paint jobs coming up, some that I'm more excited for than others. I don't mind taking a while painting a model, going nice and slow. Guys, has there been any game slash release slash Kickstarter that you got really excited for, such invested in that hasn't really panned out? God tier and era stay out of mind. Um, the Village Attacks was a board game that I was super into conceptually, but the board game itself was kind of like, it's kind of meh. Uh, that was like an idea where instead of it being like a hero delve where you're going into the evil person's castle to like stop them from like marauding your village, uh, you play as the evil person and the NPC are the villagers that enter your evil castle and you fight against them. Uh, I love that concept so much. I love playing as Dracula, as a vampire. Uh, but the game was kind of trash. I don't know if it was trash, but uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't very good. Gotta be careful about using the word trash around AOS gamers. They get real uppity. <laughs> Even when you pose it as a question. Is this thing bad? Why do you hate this thing? <laughs> oh, Legend Keepers? I know that Legend Keepers did the same thing. It was a it was a monster, uh, it was a monster delve. I have four thousand points of fully painted space wolves. They're the most intricate and annoying things to paint in batches. I bet. I bet. Sounds like Boss Monster. I play Boss Monster too. Now that I think of it, you're totally right. That's the same concept. I totally forgot about that. 
I played that game one time and it felt so meh that I was like, surely we're doing something wrong. And I never played it again. Do you like Boss Monster? There are so many cool expansions for it, but I played it one time and I was just like, this can't be right. That's, that's how I felt when I was playing it. In fairness, is this trash? Is this trash is kind of leading. Sure, it's leading, but I'm not saying it is. And if you watch the video, you would realize that I didn't say it was trash. I said that it wasn't for me. But yes, it is It is clickbait, 100%. But it isn't dishonest, which I think is the most important thing. I think the most important thing is not to kill anybody. Yeah, that is also very important. Blue Nine says it's okay. He still loves you. <laughs> he still loves you. Nice. Okay. Good. Good. I want a full set of Boss Monster with Game Man promos and sold it. No bueno. I don't get why people like it. Okay, so you didn't like it either. Okay. I kept expecting Vinci V to walk in at any moment and slap you for calling AOS trash. I didn't call it trash, though. And in fact, if you watch the Warhammer Weekly video that came out, basically defends Scott's position. Oh. I, I mean, he doesn't, like, say, I agree with Scott about all these things. He's just, like, he's entitled to his opinion, and the many of the gripes that he has with the game are the same gripes that we've been complaining about for years. Rules bloat is a big one. Yeah, get wrecked, internet commenters. Um, but no. I, I'm excited to... Because I had a chat with Rob on his stream about, about the game. I caught a little bit of that. Yeah, and he, he's like super compelled about the game being competitive. And I'm really excited to like explore that idea. He has like some connections that he said he was going to hook me up with regarding playing the game competitively. I'm really excited to kind of explore that and kind of, you know, see where it takes me. Again, it all comes down to this matter of opinion, right? It's not like anyone is or isn't right or wrong. Scott, what was your favorite weapon in Hades? Oh, that's a question I really want to answer. Um, You know, I really like playing with the fists, um, but I also really enjoy the um, Hades aspect of the sword, which makes the uh, like the gems, the, like the casting gems, pop out of the person. I love the build of Hades aspect of the sword, and then getting the uh, Artemis uh, cast, which is like the arrow that crits. And then getting dislodge wounds, and just like, and then maybe getting a, a fourth cast. You have four casts. Fucking load them up with a bunch of crits. Go do the special. They all pop out. They do dislodge wounds for all four of them. You just that's like a one thousand damage combo. I love doing that. It's so much fun. Fists are great. Yeah, dude, fists are great. Ready right for another snow apocalypse? Ice dams getting me down. Are we are we seeing a lot? Are we seeing a lot of uh, a lot of snow coming coming through? Not as bad as the last one, but still plenty. Damn it. Sorry, I had to stand up because it's nut time. Nut time. Um, have I played Gloomhaven? I played it one time with uh, someone who knew the game. I don't remember the combat. I might have to play it again. Scott's opinions are indeed opinions. What was the anger slash calm disagreement ratio on that video? I don't, I don't, I couldn't find a way to figure it out. The spear in Hades is a lot of fun. The spear is a lot of fun, but that's the one I'm the worst at. I did make it through. I'm currently playing at about a heat level of nine or 10 on most weapons, other than the spear. The spear I'm at four or five, cause I'm a fucking shit kid. 
What up, almighty spaz? We are indeed painting spoos marines. The spoosiest. Um, I'm gonna put some... I feel like the color I'm using right now is a little bit too bright for my correction. So I'm gonna put some more Dawnstone in. Which will darken it up by like 2%. Pansy Bear wants to know what video game you're pay playing right now. I'm not really playing any video games um, at the moment. I, uh, I've been really watching a lot of movies lately. That's what I've been doing with my free time. That and also 3D printing. I've been exploring 3D printing a lot uh, more recently. Have I tried out Sifu yet? I, I did look into every single game that you guys mentioned, and I ended up not going with any of them. They didn't really feel like my jam a ton. Um, Unfortunately, sorry about that. Uh. In fairness, I feel like you said the same thing about Hades initially. Um, I don't think so, uh, but maybe. I will say that in general, uh, I, I used to avoid single player games like The Plague and have recently found a lot of enjoyment in them. So part, part of me definitely should just shut up and play a game and just see if I like it or not. There's definitely some truth to that. Okay. Let's see where else we could do some fixing up. Final Space Marine clickbait? No. Um, Evan, did you use that name or that phrase in a title somewhere? <laughs> I think that's the title, the title of the uh, the video. Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, no, this this is legitimately, and I, I didn't, haven't mentioned this yet. Um, this is the last space frame I'm ever going to paint until someone pays them a lot of money. <laughs> I don't know. I have zero interest in painting these guys. I don't. I never. I've never have. I've always done it for money, um, or for videos, um, and I don't need to do that anymore. That's true. So I am. I am done with this last space marine. It's gonna be like uh, the ending of the mystery of the druids. Not sure what that is, but. <laughs> like one person in the chat is going to type what I'm thinking of, probably. Dalbjorn is a great artist. Yes. Also, artistically, the game is so beautiful and has so many cool references to film. Yeah, honestly, yes. Okay, if Games Workshop reached out to me and and they were like, we love you, you have to paint a space marine though, I would be like, get fucking bent. Like, honestly. <laughs> nothing, I don't, I don't want to work with GW anymore. Um, not because of uh, space marines and having to paint them, but it's not something I have to do. I did that. It didn't work out for me. Definitely my fault, but uh, I don't need to uh, walk that road again. Don't worry, baby. This time things will be different. Yeah, no I've shit. I've changed. No shit. Well, I'm not a gigantic publicly traded corporation that doesn't care about any individual human being on the planet <laughs> and only prioritizes profits over everything else. Again, I was the one in wrong. So I totally admit that. But I don't need to experience that again. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Hey, Scott, if you ever want to argue with if AOS is comp viable, just ask them the price support it gets. <laughs> LVO ticket was 130 Top 8 got nothing. FLG open ticket, $90 first place, nothing. So, okay, so Pansy, your argument is that because you don't make money while playing it, it can't be competitive. Is that what you're saying? It's okay for saying that, by the way. I'm just curious. That's the argument you're forming. 
how big are your AOS vampire accounts getting now? Um, I'm at 1340 points of fully painted stuff. And I have a lot of shit that's in progress. Will, will you still leak their products to the community though? Absolutely, okay. I have fully, I've fully uh, um, engaged with my role as the Robin Hood of rules. <laughs> Um, we are we are the leak masters. The leak masters. Yes. Azathoth says, I'm pretty sure once you mentioned Wapedia in a video, you got added to a secret blacklist somewhere anyway. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, Scott was already on that list. I was on a, all, yeah, I was already on the blackest of lists. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're going to start painting tile then? No, man. No. Not into tile. Unfortunately. Okay, okay, okay. We still cool. gotta find some robots that you're excited about, Scott. Why is that? So that way we can play sci-fi games. I mean, I like Dark Eldar. Those aren't robots. Those are elves. Specifically robots. Okay. Um, I do like the robot in uh, Blackstone Fortress. So whatever that robot is, that's what I want an army of. Wahapedia is doing the Lord's work indeed. Are there 40 key vampires? Yeah, they're called Space Marines. Blood Angels. You're really, this thing? I like it. It's got it's got a really cool vintage feel. Okay, so you you like the like fifties style robots? Yeah, like if you took a fifties fridge and made it into a, a robot, like this. What? I put it on the. Oh, screen. That, that's the robot. Yes. Yeah. Um. Beep, yeah. Boop. Okay. I'm so that's not the only robot I'm into. I don't really know what robots I like. I don't really look into that medium a whole lot, but uh, that one I do like, yes. So Mechanicus. Part of Mechanicus is very fucking cool. There's another robot in the Mechanicus range that looks like a bigger version of that, and I I like that robot. He's cool. Have I seen the robots from Conflict 47? I have not. Castellan, I think that's the name. I have the Conflict 47 robots. Some of them are pretty cool. Yeah, so sort of that Fallout vibe, but maybe not quite that uh, cartoony. Just play Fallout. So that's a video game that. And what up, what up, John? How's that? Uh, how's that Golden Demon painting going, buddy? <laughs> I'm sure he's close. I wasn't. I hope to, so. I wasn't trying to give you any shit. Um, so Pansy Bear says yes. To make a game competitively viable, it should have some sort of prizing. It's what draws more people to play the game, and they get more eyes on the game. Sure, you can play any game seriously. It doesn't have any foundation to make it a comp scene. Yes, those are the robots that I dig. I don't know if I want a whole army of them, but like as like a flavor in a robot army, fuck yeah. Yes, please. I'm just I'm just trying to get an idea of if we're gonna print up proxies for like one of the many sci-fi games that involves robot combat. Mm, okay, I got you. I, I don't want to stick you with the anime mecha if you don't like anime mecha, that kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. That is not for me. How do you feel about like Metal Gear? Metal Gear Solid? Yeah, like like the robots from that that are more industrial, realistic looking. Uh, can you show me an example? Yeah, give me a second. Yeah. Uh, John is almost done with a vampire. Just needs to do the base. Fuck yeah, dude. Good luck. That's awesome. Nice. Um, that robot is from ancient human versus AI war that happened long before 40K's current setting. Okay. Okay. I like that. Get your lore out of here. Scott hates big robots with big flat panels. I do agree with that. I want round. I want interesting shapes for sure. Gets caught into infinity. I mean, I definitely am into infinity. Okay, let's keep searching for mistakes that I have made. I'm actually gonna do a little mixture. I'm gonna get some. Uh... 
I'm gonna get some footage of this. So excuse me while I walk around and set up a sliding shot with my Rhino stream. I need to get this for my video that I'm working on right now. Basically, what I'm discovering about making corrections is that um, I, I need a couple of different grays because I have this gradient. Uh, I need a couple of different grays so that um, when I try to paint a darker patch to fix a recessed shade that I fucked up, um, I have a couple options for what grays I can use. Blue 985 says, I heard Scott once walked up to Age of Sigmar in a bar and spat in their eye. <laughs> Sigmar? Blessed Sigmar. What wisdom can Sigmar give us today? Here are his words of wisdom for you this day, child of the ordered world. To succeed, you must believe. When you believe, you will succeed. Beautiful. Thanks, Sigmar. Hi! Well, you can see the camera moving at the bottom of the uh, frame there. That's fun. Do ATATs get an exemption from Scott's no flat robot rules? <sighs> I mean, I like Star Wars, um, but maybe not necessarily the design of ATATs, uh, but it's still cool. All right, so this is um, this is straight up Metal Gear. <clears throat> this is Metal Gear Rex from Metal Gear Solid. Turn my camera off. He ran away. Turn my camera off. Get the camera out of the way. All right, turning the camera off. For the Rhino, rather. Okay, come back. Okay, kind of like creepy crawly, spidery vibe. He's got like a little little vestigial leg to help him stand up. Um, so that's that's metal metal gear. Uh, and then we've also got I hate this pose, but this is sort of what I mean by more industrial, realistic style. I feel like I don't love or hate this. But what, what will make or break it for me is going to be the paint job. And it's a pretty interesting paint job. I like, I like tan and black together. I think those look really good together. Um, but I have a hard time looking at this and like judging it creatively or artistically. It's kind of just like a bunch of boxes and shapes together. Yeah. But cause, that's because I'm not very well attuned to robots. So I don't, I don't, I haven't formed much of an opinion, but robots. like, I don't hate it. I love it. He's got quite a, phallical object <laughs> it's like right there you know um, that's his cockpit <laughs> that's gotta be a fucking joke right <sighs> um <laughs> I, I here's the fun fact i was just like uh, um <laughs> i can't i can't speak for this this is just a 3d print um from a modular mech thing that i'm i'm going to buy but um the uh, the second Metal Gear game, Metal Gear uh, Solid 2. Hang on, you're gonna you're gonna like this. Tell me when to look. I will. Oh, is it the fourth? Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, there's also the ones from Zone of the Enders. Actually, that's a better example. Open image. Thank you. All right, Scott. 
It is, in fact, the cockpit. That is where the pilot sits. Oh, my God. Yeah, okay. It's kind of in line with the legs. So you don't really look at it very much, but yeah, that there it, it is. It's there. You could fucking kill somebody with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do I do like this one a bit more just because it's like more humanoid. Um but yeah, the, the cockpit literally in the crotch area. Well, this is like full blown anime mecha stuff. Yeah, this, I mean, I, I think I'm enjoying the more humanoid thing more, but whenever I look at a model kit that, that is like a Gundam, I, I, I haven't found one that I'm like truly in love with yet. Hmm. I don't know. I think I need to look at a bunch of robots of like, like a bunch of different styles and just like see what, uh, what speaks to me. Hmm. Now chat's gonna like, like think of a bunch of like different like robot like uh, genres, and we're just gonna do like a little, little rolodex here. I mean, I'm I'm fine with that. Uh, <laughs> there's there's that. also the opportunity to just pull that clip and replace the image. I'm liking this humanoid form more. You could just put anything there, chat. Meme away. By the way, if anyone asks how do I feel about the robots from X thing, I am <laughs> not going to know what you're talking about. Probably. Um, so. something like this white glint from armored core 4 white glint yeah looks okay looks like a looks like a gundam yeah it's definitely in that same vein um it's a little bit more stylized gundams generally have what i would call yes. more human proportions i would yeah i would definitely agree with that um a lot of gundams seem to have a very wide stance is that a normal thing i think Part of that is just to help the model stand up. Okay, okay. Um, in the shows and stuff, they do not stand like this as often, but it is like, yeah. If we're going to pose a model kit, this is how we're going to do it so it doesn't get knocked over. Gotcha. Stubbucks asks, hi, Scott. Watching from Middlesbrough, UK. Big fan of your work. When are you posting more painting videos on YouTube? I'm working on one right now. We're painting a space marine for heavy metal marines. Uh, so that's my next video is a painting one. They're probably going to be out in the next week and a half, uh, or, or, or probably a week from now. I'll probably finish it in a week. All right, Chad, I'm going to pull up another one. You have to promise not to cry, though. This will bring bring back feels for some people. <clears throat> How about BT? Okay, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. This this is a mech from Titanfall. Yeah, the I, uh, I'm digging this one more than the anime one. I mean, this is what I would call Western anime inspired. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That, I could see that being the case. Yep. Albino black sheep is... Yep. The, there are the tears. Rest in peace, BT. Is this a Titanfall thing? Yeah. Is it because the game's dead? No. It's because the campaign for Titanfall 2 is really good. Really? Oh, yeah. Would have never expected that. Um, that That's was fun. my exact reaction. Not only was it a bang and multiplayer game, but the uh, it is the best first-person shooter campaign ever made. Better than Doom Eternal. Better than Doom Eternal. The gameplay loop is you know flavor to taste. What game you like playing best is up to you. But um, the Titanfall Two campaign is perfect. It is. It is not very long it doesn't need to be but every level is banging introduces a new fun mechanic um the story is delivered excellently uh it's got all the kinds of set pieces you'd want it feels you know how most games they're trying to deliver on the action movie feel but mostly you just get caught in a slog like you play call of duty or something like that and it's like 
There's a scene that feels like it's from an action movie, and then you fight for like an hour against a horde of just mooks, and then there's another scene. Titanfall doesn't mess around with that. That sucker moves. Okay. It's real good. I should okay. I should try it out. I, I mean, I have the game. It's free. To, is, it's not free to play, is it? No, I don't think it is. But it's super cheap now. I do. I do already have it. I I, I had a little multiplayer stint with uh, with Titanfall recently. Um, so I'll I'll give it a single player a shot. Oh uh, yeah, the Titanfall two campaign is definitely worth checking out. Highly recommended. It holds your cojones till the end. Yes, it does. Phoenix Mercer, Maniac Armored Core has been around for twenty five, almost twenty five years. That's true. Um, New Armored Core coming out this year. Excited about it. Doom Eternal. <laughs> Doom Eternal. I love that. It's like Tokyo, right? It's like the Y in Tokyo makes an I or an E sound with your mouth. Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal. Just <laughs> like I say that all fucking day. <laughs> That's fun. Titanfall has a whole number of really cool looking mechs. Uh, in my opinion, I like their designs a lot. Does it count as a robot if it has like like fleshy bits in it and shit like that? Or is that now, are we now getting into cyborg territory? If, here's my definition, if the flesh is totally synthetic, it is still a robot. Okay. If well, the flesh sick. is like, if it's, if it's your grafting mechanical parts onto an existing creature, that's a cyborg. But if it's like, we it's a biomechanical machine that's still a robot obviously within reason right because like you just opened the floodgates for like claiming anything could be a robot and be entirely a scott i'm a robot i'm a biomechanical machine exactly see yeah ants are robots um do me turtle <laughs> do me turtle i love that <clears throat> that's hot <laughs> I love it. I'm also a big fan of uh, Joy Toy has a whole series of what I would call Titanfall inspired mech toys. Like they don't have the license to make them, so they just make their own mechs in that style. Mm -hmm. And like stuff like this, I love this thing. Yeah, he's nice and chunky. Yeah, I like that one, too. That's good. The whole thing where it's like, yeah, it's a big robot, but it's got some tactical gear on it. The guns look like just guns that are scaled up. Yes. Big fan. Someone asked, am I heavy metal painting light gray on darker gray? Uh, I am. That is what I am doing right now. The final heavy metal marine. And yes, I will need therapy after this. <laughs> So, uh, fun thing, Ollie from Broadsword Wargaming and Kara are, they're visiting me um, in October. And uh, we're trying to figure out what we should do, like, work-wise. And he is a big fan of Blood Bowl. And so I was thinking I'd get a, my Blood Bowl team painted up and we'd shoot an episode of uh, Kill Your Friends with Ollie from Broadsword Wargaming. What do you think of that, stream? I'm into that. I haven't told him that yet, though. Well, you might have just told him. I might have. Kara was here earlier. Uh, I don't know if she still is. Here's a classic Gundam in a style that you might like. The Zaku. Oh, I've heard the term Zaku before. This is the classic Gundam bad guy mook mech, although this is like the customized one for the big bad guy, Char, because red ones go faster. Uh, I, so I've seen this before, and so I am familiar with it, and it is, it's, it's okay. I'm not like in love with it, but I don't, I don't hate it. It's the, you said you liked that 50s vibe, and they definitely have a lot of that baked in here. They do, you're right, you're right. And there are, of course, like 50 million different versions of this, because it's one of the iconic phases of Gundam, so... <laughs> We need to prepare a shipment of wood elves for Scott to open when he finishes this. Yes, it's my treat. That's my treat at the end of this. At the end of this, some trick. cleansing wood elves. Yeah. Oh, they're vampires too. <sighs> oh. If you guys could find me a bunch of wood elves that I've never seen before, that would like be the best birthday present ever.
I feel like I've seen everything, but that can't be true. So I'm kind of like finding new vampires all the time. Scott realizing he doesn't like the 50s vibe anymore. Yeah, it's actually interesting. I, I would, it'd be cool to compare that robot that I did like with the Zaku to really figure out what about that other one I like so much. Um, I don't know, like, I, because I don't think about this too much, um, I'm not very well spoken about why, about what robots I like. So yeah, I just, I just said that I like 50s stuff and then he showed me a 50s thing and I was like, eh, yeah, I don't really like it that much. Or I'm not that super enthusiastic about it. So yeah, it's gonna take some, some research. Look up Infinity's Blackjack. We'll find some way to lure him into Infinity. <laughs> I think the I don't think the blackjack is the one that's going to appeal to Scott. Honestly, I think the salamander is the mech that would appeal to you more. But we'll start with the blackjack. What about neutral F elf STLs that can be painted up in a wood elf style? I mean, yeah, there are definitely some elves that I like um, from uh, uh, Frosthaven. There were some beautiful elf sculpts that were very simple that I found recently. I, I'm game for any of that stuff. Have I seen Raging Heroes? They don't have an elf range. I just recently looked. I think they have like a fairy thing, which is like kind of okay. Oh, I wanted to ask this question. Okay, to everyone who has printed out like humanoid sized thing, things from Raging Heroes, and so not like dragons and big chunky boys, but like a normal sized person. Do you guys get good detail with those prints? Cause I just bought some vampires some vampire foot knights, and I printed them out on the same build plate as I printed out some other vampires from a different STL maker. And the ones from Raging Heroes kind of have that 3D printing kind of vibe where it's like, none of, none of the recesses are very deep and nothing is really super defined and it's a little bit too small. Like it's not the right kind of heroic scale. I felt um, like the details on mine that I printed were pretty good. Yeah, your dudes are big chonkers, though. Well, that's that's true, but I mean, like that angel uh, lady that was running around on the board uh, in our game last week. That's a that's a uh, raging heroes model. Jay, Jay with the dirty. It's amazing the quality of work raging heroes puts out. Sculpted with only one hand. True. Do you like the Wood Elves by Artisan Guild? Uh, I might. I uh, Artisan Guild is definitely more of a, a style than uh, other um, uh, other ones. Yeah, this looks good. This looks good, but this is definitely oh. bigger than uh, than my model. Yeah, I mean, I've got the size advantage for sure. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like my vampire is the same height as this person, but. It's uh, all the limbs are thinner and everything is thinner. And so it just feels like it's, uh, it's gonna be harder to paint and uh, not as enjoyable. Uh, but this, this looks fine. Doesn't have any eyes really. But yeah, let me, chat, let me know. So e Evan's not struggling in that same way, but have you guys ever printed out Raging Heroes or Heroes Infinite uh, and felt that way or no? Yeah, why do they have two different names for their company? I don't understand that. I feel like Raging Heroes was, was has been a company for such a long time. Um, and the Heroes Infinite thing became a thing when they started to delve into the STL world. So I thought Raging Heroes was their physical line and Heroes Infinite was their STL line. Yeah, but now they're just like synonymous with each other. Heroes Infinite 3D printing release from Raging Heroes, but they have websites for both that are like exactly the same. So, I don't know. I think you're probably right. It's probably just legacy stuff and it's all tied together now. A oh, Raging is retail resin and Infinite is STL only. Okay, sure. Is one heroic 32 and the other just 32? I feel like that's about, that that might be what it is. I feel like Heroes Infinite is true scale 32 millimeter, um, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, dipping back to infinity, this is the blackjack that they mentioned. I don't know if this is gonna be to your taste. 
I mean, it kind of looks like the other ones you've already shown me. Yeah, exactly. He's just kind of a bricked up dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a bricked up dude. That's exactly what it is. All right. So I'll pull up a different one that I think is going to be something you'd be more interested in feeling and painting. Okay. Pepe Milkshake says, no idea what you on about. The best kind of minis for 3D printing are those that have extreme contrast with deep recesses and sharp points. Anything that is more subtle will look less good. Artisan Guild, Cast and Play, Arch Villain are all good examples of uh, well done minis for printing. Um, yeah. It's definitely some element of truth to that. All right, Scott, how about this guy? The Salamander. Yeah, this one's cooler. I feel like, hmm, I don't know. I want to think about this more. See, you got to be like me, Scott, and just think about giant robots all the time. Yeah. See, that 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 would help. You know, you think a lot about what 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 you like because you're you know you're you're looking at it a lot, watching TV shows, watching movies with mechs and stuff. I got to do that more now. Let my thoughts be consumed by robots. And your body. And your body. Um, someone was asking me about if I had seen Lost Kingdom Wood Elves. I have not seen Lost Kingdom Ira. What up, Ira? Well, let's not pull it up because that way someone can send you Lost King Kingdom Wood Elves to be your palette cleanser after painting a Space Marine for 150 hours or whatever. Okay, I'm not going to paint it for that <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, you're right. No, 150 hours is far too few. 350 hours. Kill me, dude. You're entering this in Golden Demon, right, Scott? You know, there was a brief moment when I was like, I have this sick conversion that would definitely stand out in the case. I should paint this for Golden Demon and just like, just spend a long time on it. And then I was like, fuck that, dude. If I'm gonna paint something for Golden Demon, it's gonna be something that I like. And I do not like Space Marines. That wasn't abundantly clear. What Space Marine is this? This is the 13th Company Space Wolf. I don't know, Scott. You might have to enter this in Golden Demon. Why? Started a poll. It's not going to be good enough to win, so what's the point? Well, then you just have to make it good enough to win. No. I a skink like... one last year. You can do it. Yeah, the skink one last year, but also Gavin painted that model for like 150, 200 hours. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, like I said, after you paint the Space Wolf for like 300 hours... You'll need a palate cleanser. It ain't happening. I can't do it. I'll die. As always, I exist to be the screen door on Scott's submarine. I will surely die. Speaking of submarine, I just watched uh, the... Uh, no, what's the album of Beatles made that has... Yellow Submarine in it. I watched that movie uh, that runs through the whole album. It's made by the Beatles. It's all animated. You mean the album Yellow Submarine? <sighs> That's in the title of the movie, but I didn't know if that was the name of the album. It is the... the okay. Yeah. Why not throw it in your case? You'll get a little pin. Um, fair question, Jay. Uh... I'm not saying this is the right way to think about it, but like I've already gotten finalist pins. I don't need to prove to myself that I'm able to get a finalist pin. If I'm gonna put something in that case, it's gonna be me going for a golden demon, oh like a God, real a trophy. Wonka bonk. Wonka bonk. Um, so, I, you know, if, if I if I go for it, I really want to go for it. Um, last time I went to golden demon, I just put in shit that I painted during the year that wasn't competitive, um, and I, I I want to really go for it weird flex plus gw is biased and hates scott and they'll never let him win yeah that, that's, that's the that's the real reason that he doesn't too. Enter. Mm -hmm. yeah weird flex <laughs> i guess that is a weird flex i'm not meaning to like uh be i don't know what the term is uh aloof self-absorbed aloof um but like i guess um one of the reasons that you get value out of competitions is you can ask for feedback you can compare your best work to someone else's best work 
and see it there in the case and really, really struggle for an end result that you're, you're gonna feel proud of. If I put this model in that I know I'm not, you know, giving my all to, I know I'm not like putting all my effort into, it's like I already know what the problems are with it. I know that I can paint better. It's like, what's the, kind of what's the point? Um, that's how I feel about it. Scott wants the other painter's taste for display painting to turn to ash in their mouths as he always the slayer sort of loved. <laughs> yes, of course. All right. Um, I think this is probably good enough for recessed shade cleaning. The rest is probably going to come from doing edge highlights um, and then probably some more like uh, smoothing out of blends and stuff. But it's looking pretty good if you want to take a look at it. I'll do a little spin around. Uh, shout out if you uh, see a mistake. Just kidding. It's probably a couple. Um, nice subtle blends for the bottom of panels or where panels meet edges and then some very sharp recess shades. Um, I'm going to go do a little turntable shot of this. I'm going to bring you along with the uh, that camera right there. Oh boy. I did not make this conversion. This was made by someone else, uh, Val Bjorn. Um, Scott wants, yeah, I already said that one. You're not going to recess shade all those tiny little tufts on the cape? Yeah, not yet, because they're going to be a different color. So I'll do that later. We're just painting the uh, armor right now. Uh, there's a chip in his armor on his shin. Um, I don't see one. I mean, there. you know what? There is stuff around that shin, though. I messed this up. Uh-oh. What's up? I'm saying don't mess things up. Oh, okay. All right, before we take the class on a field trip, one more set of robots. This, these are the Conflict 47 mechs that uh, we mentioned like seven years ago. Okay. How do you feel about these 50-style Soviet mechs? What's that? Let's zoom in a bit. This is the front of the model, not the back of it? I think it's some of them it's the front and some of them it's the back. It looks like the same face on every single dude. Might be the back of all of them. Show me, show I'm the, not sure. Show me the front, you dingus. I, it's not my fault. This is the link, <laughs> the first link for Warlord Games. Come on. Okay. The first picture is the back of them. Oh, okay. It's a Google search. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> I was like, surely this can't be right. We're, we're going to do some weathering as well. I just want to start from like a perfectly pristine place, which is totally counterintuitive, but um, yeah. We're going to do- the Right ones. These are cool too though. We're going to do a little baby, little baby chips. Here are some other ones. Okay, you know what? The paint job isn't the greatest. It's not, a, not an issue though. I kind of like them. I kind of like the no neck sunken head thing with like the big, like collars. Yeah. Um, I like the rounded calves that are nice and big and meaty. Um, it's kind of more of a dude in a suit though, right? It's not so much a robot. Yeah, these are like, I would call these power armor rather than mecha, but it's still robot adjacent. It's like the power armor from Fallout, it looks like to me. Yeah, I get but Who knows, maybe their scale is such that it's just a little guy sitting in the head and it's the giant dude like Pacific Rim. We don't know. Very Zaku adjacent. I, yeah, I would agree with that. Yep, it definitely has that same sort of same sort of vibe. It gives me aquatic vibes too. Like I, I kind of think of like a, a diver from the fifties as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I like that as well. Phantom spaceman kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Scott thinks he's powering up his super saiyan golden demon entry, but he really needs to try and enter. So he learns for himself and his style, what it's going to take to be successful in a competition. I'm not sure if you and I are disagreeing right now. Brigandage. My whole thing is if I'm going to try to compete in Golden Demon, I'm going to do it how everyone does it. I'm going to go whole hog and really put in a lot of effort. Can't half hog it. I mean, like, You yeah, got to crank that hog. If I, if I literally go in and know I'm not doing my very best, I will not win. Guaranteed. Um, so I, I need to at least start from a baseline, which is the very best that I can do. Here are the fronts of the ones I was showing you before, which is really unfortunate that they put them on a background where they blend in. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Give us some contrast. Yeah. I'll show you whole hog. I'm sure you will, John. I'm sure you will. Damn. 
Entering Golden Demon is more than painting a mini. The mindset is part of it. It takes a lot of painting from inspiration of a model such idea, preparation, sketching, basing, and color theory, and then execution. I agree with Scott. When you enter, you go full bore. I mean, or like, I can like, it. I can grab some shit that I painted this year and put it in the case just for the sake of it. But like, what, what is, chat to you? What is the purpose? Why, why would? What's the value of doing that? What's the value of taking a model that I didn't paint for competition and putting it in the case? Um, self promotion. <laughs> but you don't even, you don't even, they don't even put your fucking name next to the goddamn thing. <laughs> yeah, but they know. They know. They know. For lols. Dear Warlord Games, let's do better. To win the Slayer Sword on an accident so you can flex. Okay, I agree with that. Yeah, actually. If you win it on a whim, and that is Omega Flex. That is, what it, that is is the Instagram model that definitely did put on makeup and stuff and then goes, oh, I just woke up like this. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what that is. I'm not even trying, bro. Yeah. This is not even my final I just form. painted this for fun. Do the winners win on their first try? Uh, no. Probably not. Well, so, sometimes, I mean, I don't know of an example, um, but uh, probably not. But I'm not saying that I don't want to try at all. I'm just saying that if I'm going to try, I'm going to really try. Took me 11 years before I got mine. Congratulations, Max Painted. That's awesome. I'm glad that you got one. That's awesome. Okay. Um, How are we doing the field trip, Scott? If you don't play, you can't win. For sure, yeah. For sure. Um... We're going to just walk the tripod. All right. Everybody hold on to your lunch. It's so dark. I'm here. You can see me kind of. <laughs> All right. Here we go, chat. You can see how uh, dirty my office is with boxes of painting everywhere. Oh, here is, uh, here is the podcast set. Hope everyone's having fun right All now. All right, we're going to stay wide over here while I set up this area. <laughs> hey, you might want to up the exposure a little bit. Sure. I mean, I'm about to turn this light on. I was about to blast everybody. Oh, that's a good point. All right. Oh, fuck. Also, Scott, for what it's worth, 70% of people say you should be entering this thing into Golden Demon. That's 7 out of 10 doctors. <laughs> All right. Hi. That camera is live right now if you don't want to be in the live stream. Okay. All right. Seven out of ten people say I should enter it in Golden Demon. I mean, 30 out of 43 voters. Okay. Oh, so you put a poll down? Yeah, I did. Um, the people okay. decide, Scott. Direct democracy paint stream. <laughs> okay. So my big key light right here is uh, a VL30. Uh, VL300 from Godox. Uh, it has a huge softbox on it. And it's a little bit too high at the moment. You can get really low with this light. And the lower you get, the, the more you can uh, have some leg room with uh, exposure. So we're going to drop this down to right about there. Um, I have a little note here for me. Um, it says Space Wolf background light hue is 30. That's because people in the office like Alex will change the light every now and then when they're doing their own shots. So I want to make sure that I'm consistent on all my turntable shots. So I just make a little note of it. I'm pretty sure he didn't change it, so we're still on 30. Um, and then I got a turntable right here, a little dot in the middle, uh, just so I know where exact center is because it is so annoying to put a model, a model slightly off center and have it like rotate around and have the shot kind of go all crazy. So uh, having a little dot for center is really nice. So let's... Uh, Evan, I need to change the frame rate. Is that going to fuck everything up? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Let's find out. We'll find out. All right. So let's roll in here. I'm going to take my map box off because the map box, when the light is like this, actually blocks the light and it shades the model. 
because it's like the it's like the perfect hood for shading the model in this kind of setup. Um, the mat box, for those that don't know, is a little flappy hood. It sticks out past the lens. Yeah, it's like a it's like a baseball hat. That's uh, exactly what I was about to say. Is it's basically my, wearing a ball cap on your camera. I just took the my lens off. I want a different lens for this shot. Flashbang. I want more of a telephoto lens. Okay. It looks like everything is still set up from the last time I did this shot. Sometimes I would need to raise and lower the table um, to uh, get it to the right height, but I'm like right in the middle of my center thirds line. Maybe a little bit too low, or sorry, too high. So we'll kind of crank it down a bit. So we're right in that nice little area. I don't, Evan, can you, when I zoom in, can you see it when I zoom in like this? Um, yes. How zoomed in are you thinking? Like when I push this button, is it zooming in and out? Oh, no. No? Okay. All right. I do a little, this, uh, the Blackmagic camera has a little button for zooming in at 200%, which is really critical just to make sure you are nailing focus because there are so many times when I uh, think the shot's in focus and I go and put it on my 30 inch monitor and I'm like, well, I fucked that up. So a little z digital zoom to know that you're in focus is very helpful. All right, I'm gonna change the frame rate now because um, the white balance also matters for this and it changes everything. Uh, this is gonna be the B-roll preset. Oh yeah, that killed it. What did that do? Killed the stream. Okay. I can fix it. I mean, it didn't kill the stream stream. I mean, it killed the camera on stream. Okay. It's probably because of the frame rate. I'm doing 24 FPS. Yep. Or 23.98. All right. There we go. I'm going to check what the exposure was on my last clip. I used F8 150. Okay. Just so that I'm consistent. F8 150, ISO 3200. And then we're camera. getting drops. I don't understand anything about cameras. <laughs> There's something wrong with this camera, I swear to God. But like, if I go to F8 150, which I'd shot on last time, the background is overexposed and it wasn't before. So I don't know what the fuck is happening, but whatever. Okay, that's looking good. We'll turn the turntable on and then we'll let it rip for two minutes, which is about one, a little bit more than one full rotation. I just realized that this mini is doing a K-pop pose. It is? Yeah, he's doing the pointing thing, and then as he rotates, it's like the dance where it's pointing at the different sections oh, of the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kogar TV says, I like it when he points at me. <laughs> <clears throat> this is a this is a uh this lazy Susan is really big. Or, yeah, and uh, it rotates super slowly. Um, I've gone through a, I've gone through a couple of Lazy Susans because they're all kind of shit. Um, but this one was kind of more of an expensive one. But it's designed to be able to hold human weight. And so I can actually stand on it and do like a little rotating shot if uh, I want it. But it goes nice and slow. I like it when it goes slow just so you can really see all the details. Um, and then if I want to, I can speed it up a little bit. It's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit harder to slow things down. Shooting footage in slow-mo requires more consideration for exposure and stuff like that. So speeding it up is a little bit easier than slowing it down. The chat is memeing really heavily on you now. Well, I, I mean, I can't see You really chat. like it when things go slow so you can <laughs> watch it. Chat, you dirty dogs. That's looking pretty good. Still a little smudgy in certain areas. 
Oh, that focus is so nice. He's so proud of himself. All right, we're at the full rotation, but we're gonna give it a couple more seconds just to make editing a little bit easier. Having one full loop is helpful. And then some. Okay, that was good. All right. I'm going to back the camera off now. And then I'm gonna turn all the lights off. Ooh. Um, for the next person, in case someone else needs to come in here and and use this stuff. Fuck. One other important thing when you're doing this is to take the model and go put it somewhere else because the number of times that I've like almost crushed a model with a light is is a terrifying amount. And you don't get you don't, you don't get take backs on this one that I have here. If it's broken, it's fucking broken forever. Yeah, you won't be able to enter it into Golden Demon then. <laughs> All right. Turn the light on in the room. Okay. I'm going to change the lens out again so everyone close your eyes. It's about to get white. It's all right. I'm switching off the camera. All right. Our normal lens is back on. You want to switch it back to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stream preset. Preset. Painting live. Okay. Putting the baseball hat back on my camera. God, please, bro. There we go. All right. And then we'll roll on back to the painting area. You can see right there in the corner. That was fun. Was that fun, chat? I was there in that shot, Rufus. I just was shrouded in darkness. Darkness. Darkness is my ally. <laughs> okay. Let us begin the other tedious process. Just kidding. This is all tedious. Um, of Edge highlighting the power armor. Speaking of Golden Demon earlier, I'm working on three entries for Golden Demon right now. The process of focusing on something like this and working on all three has been a blast. I'm not going to place or get a pin, but my style is bright colors. I'm just going to shake it up and have fun. Awesome. All right. Evan, there is like a web page open to Evan Metal Archive where it looks at the Horus Heresy Space Wolf. Can you there, tell me what, it was. I closed it. Can you tell me what the first edge highlight is? Uh, Space Wolf? Yeah, so you have to go to the Horus Harris section, and then it's a the Space Wolf one. Burning of Prospero? Yeah, yeah. Prospero, get it right. Prospero? Prospero. Uh, Just dry brush it, it'll go great. <laughs> you want, yeah, that's true. Uh, you want edge highlight of so it's the just, gray armor? It's the step after the Rhinox Hide Deep Shade. What's the step after? Chunky that? highlight in Ministratum Gray. Okay. Here, I'll just throw it up on that. You can see the whole thing here. There it is. So this is the Evie Metal. This is Evie Archive. So we're going to do a chunky highlight of Administratum Gray, which is like one click above where I was base coating, supposedly. And you chunky highlight with it. Chunky. So it's just a, a thicker edge highlight. You want to be able to 
um, have future highlights be able to live inside of this one. So you gotta be able to, you gotta paint the line thick enough so that you can paint thinner lines inside of it. Yeah, so that's Tron a three-stage edge highlight with administratum gray, then administratum gray and white mixed one to one, and then white. I'm gonna be here a while. Well, there's plenty more streams. <laughs> Hell yes, I'm entering two minutes for the first time. I don't, I don't care about winning anything. The journey has been a blast, so much learning. I mean, Discord's been super helpful. Nice. Yeah, like, there's a lot to, like even as a beginner painter, there's a lot to learn in the process of just painting something like super hardcore. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying that I wouldn't also have something to learn in that process as well. I definitely would. I just, I just don't have the time and creative energy to sit down and do that for a while. Okay. Let us do some edge highlighting. So CZ up on Ur said, right, as you went on your field trap. Uh, hey, Scott, thanks for keeping me in the hobby. You always give me newfound energy to keep on painting. Nice. Smiley face. Thank you for letting me know. Dubix89 wants to know, what are your thoughts on Slab Chop, Scott? Yeah, it seems fine. I think it's a single-use tool, and generally I don't buy those for my kitchen. Also a reasonable take. Um, you know, if it's... I'm kind of of the opinion where if it gets people excited to paint their models, then it's largely a good thing. Um... So considering that, I, I'm totally, I'm totally okay with it. Okay, so one problem I have very briefly with this idea of doing the soft shading and doing the edge highlighting is that this first edge highlight that I do toward the bottom here, where the shadow is darkest, it's going to be really intense. And so, I, do I really make that thick? I don't think I do. Adric Knight with the prime sub. It's a sub, bro. Um, yeah. Anyways. Those are my thoughts about edge highlighting. Idric Knight led the charge on that one, but uh, if you didn't know, you can link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. So if you have Amazon Prime, which certainly seems like most people do, you can subscribe to one Twitch channel for free every month. You have to manu manually do it. It doesn't automatically re-subscribe, but it's a freebie bonus that you get, and you could be giving it to us right now. Give it to us. Give it to me. I want it slow. It's what keeps the lights on, keeps us going on field trips. Ooh, baby, look at that edge highlight. Woo! Crispy as fuck. All right, camera off. <laughs> you like it, Mike Genie. Don't, don't tell me you don't like it. I know you. I know you. Fox Art says, come to the UK for Warhammer Fest. Huh? I don't know if you know this, but uh, what, what was the person's name? That was uh, Fox Art. Fox Art. Um, as far as I know, I'm not allowed to go in Warhammer World. <laughs> That's what I was told last when I was there. I wonder if they'd kick you out if you just bought a ticket. You know, I think what I was told was just don't come back for a while. I think that's what I was told, actually. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone would really care if I just walk in as a normal person. They shouldn't, at least. You just wear one of those Groucho Marx sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> Fake nose and the just, big mustache. Just cracking fucking Marx Brothers jokes. Yes. No one gets them. There's sparkly stuff on this guy's foot. I don't know. I haven't used metallic paint yet. Where the frig did that come from? <laughs> Look at 
looking, looking, looking icy. Looking icy so far. Uh, get a crew together, dress up as Vince, and no one will be the wiser. Absolutely. Ask John for his tarot costume, Nico. <laughs> Is Scott is the Scott is Scott photo on the back wall under the do not serve sign? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, if I'm if I'm ever in need of any clickbait content, I'll just fly to the UK and be like, make a video called "I Went to Warhammer World Again." Surely that'll get 100k views. Easy. A much smarter person would do the, the brown chip weathering now and then the edge highlighting later. But I just want to know, I want to know that everything looks beautiful and crispy before I fuck it up. Because if I fuck it up first and then it doesn't look amazing, it's, it's much harder to fix it then um, than if I just have it all look pretty now. Um, Maho420. The unfortunate thing about sable hair brushes is that it's a bit of a lottery. Uh, whether or not you get nice brushes like this one. It's definitely Maho 42, by the way. What did I say? 420. Well, Freudian slip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, LMAO. Yeah, sometimes you get good ones, sometimes you don't get good ones. Um, I feel like the majority of the time I am pretty lucky and I get ones that are pretty good. All right, these are the edges that are super hard to do. The, the things that aren't edges. Like the top of his knee pad. Yeah, Scott's just gonna become a controversy cha a cha uh, chaser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna go to Warhammer World, explicitly try to get kicked out and then make a remake of the video. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh man, that sounds definitely like an experience that I want to relive. <laughs> That's rough, buddy. Yeah. I think the worst thing about the whole experience is just that it kind of becomes like a legacy, right? It's like, oh, you're the guy. It's like, I don't want to keep talking about this. <laughs> Like I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not like angry about it yet, but I can definitely see myself in five years just being like, can we, do we have to do this? Scott, you're the cherry pie guy. Oh, fuck, no. People don't even know the name of that guy's fucking band. I don't think it made you that guy. That's fair. Yep, warrant, you got it. This is yeah. not slaying the gray. No, you're right. This is just more gray. Does anyone know if they edge highlight the bottom of knee pads? Please say no. This model does have chips in it, sculpted in. Um, oh. Tender. Oh. Chat, look at that little toe edge highlight. That's fucking fucking fierce. You're going to be Will Wheaton at 40, wishing people would stop saying, shut up, Wesley, to you. Exactly. Exactly. Although, Will Wheaton's pretty fucking sick. I like Will. I mean, I, I, I liked him from uh, Tabletop Time. Fucking love that show on YouTube. Yeah. Will's a, Will's a really interesting dude. Yeah, I don't know much about him outside of that show. So, And also some Star Wars episodes. Some what? Star Trek episodes. There you go. <laughs> LMAO gray the gray <laughs> I love that that's hilarious that's the space wolves t-shirt yeah dude gray the gray John I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna steal your uh your outro my friend I'm gonna do a little modification though yeah 
Yeah, see, if this guy wasn't on the base, this would be a little bit easier to do right now. Come on, team. How's that looking? That's looking pretty fucking crisp right now. I can't see it. What? Just looks like gray plastic, man. What's Why didn't you paint it like a cool, bright color? <laughs> it's not my choice. Well, it ultimately is. Uh, I feel like Scott would have to murder someone in the middle of Fort Wapo to get kicked out of Adepticon. Yeah, probably. Probably murder. What is the difference between painting with sable hair and synthetic? It really is a matter of um, the tip just staying reliable for a long time. So with the sable hair, you can get a lot of mileage out of that brush. With a, with a synthetic brush, you might get two seconds out of that brush before it curls on the tip and is useless. Um, you might have ones that last a super long time. Um, I would say it's just more reliable with a sable hair brush for it to last a very, very long time. Good old reliable tip. Exactly. That is pristine. Thank you, Natalia. Cornflake Justice resubscribed and posted the entire text of War and Peace underneath. <laughs> I've been subbed for four months, but got to watch streams all year. They helped me through a rough time. Now you're the only creator I'll use my subs for. Oh, that's nice. Thank Thanks, you. Miniac. Can't wait for my brush box to get here. Finally starting on my Duchess figure, too. Nice. I got to paint my Duchess. Are you I got a, until February of next year. Are you a big, uh, are you big, I, I mean, are you interested in the idea of painting large scale figures, Evan? Yes. Ira Palmer subscribed to tier one. Ira, what up, Ira? He was the one of the guys to our class at LVO. Um, I mean, my dragons aren't technically large scale, but they might as well be. Yeah, there you Just go. Just kill me. <laughs> yeah. So you, you don't like painting big figs. I, I, I like painting big things fine. I don't like putting myself in a position where I have to paint five big things in like 10 days. Yeah. And put lights in them. <laughs> what was I thinking? Hey man, they look cool. It did. And then the sliding shot didn't work full stream. Rip. <laughs> I need a brush box. Is still available? They will be available on the website, but for now, they are not. I got a ton of them, though. Approximately 2,000. And I can't wait to sell them. Really, I can't wait to just be done with the filling the campaign. Sub, Frag Enjoyer. Frag Enjoyer! Ninja with the prime sub, my boy. Uh, it's a parody, John, so it is protected. Sorry. Wait, the account that just subbed? Uh, no, no, no. I'm saying John said under his prime sub, you have a pending lawsuit for copyright infringement. <laughs> Ray the Gray. <laughs> I'm saying it's obviously parody. It's protected, baby. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Yo, who's who's gonna be at Tup Live at Acon, baby? I mean, you're gonna be there. I am gonna be there. I hope you're there. Don't kill anybody, because they might kick you out. You're gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. You got Evan running the hardware. Yeah, everything's going to record perfectly for this one. But then the key is, in order to maintain the the streak of Tup Live always being scuffed, I, on the way back, like, I'm going to accidentally drop the recorder out of my car and it's going to, like, get run over by a semi-truck and be lost forever. Let's not do that. <laughs> Let's do the opposite of that. Is Scott really mad at GW for enforcing the contract? If it was anybody else, I feel like people would be taking GW's side. I'm not saying you did it on purpose or anything. Um, yeah, no, that's a fair question. And we can talk about it again. Um, I'm not mad. Uh, I think they could have handled the situation with more grace. Um, I think they really overdid it. Um, I think, I mean, if you think about the situation, it's just like, a, you know, an, a, another 
model that already exists in resin that I took a picture of and shared. So it wasn't like something that was groundbreaking. I don't mind like them cutting my contract, they just did it with uh, such tenacity. It was just a little bit heavy handed. I don't think tenacity is the right word, but I understand what you're saying. Maybe not. Heavy handed is definitely the right term. Yeah. As someone who has done plenty of journalistic work in controlled spaces, uh, yeah, the whole thing was scuffed. That's my opinion, though. It, it's not like a, I don't. It's not about getting kicked out of the, the contract. That was fine too. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, that whatever. That's their prerogative. Yeah. They can work with whoever they want to work with. Ah. Okay, that's pretty chunky. Chunky. Yeah, remember you got to do two thinner edge highlights after this one. There are definitely some areas where that is not going to work out. Got to um, do it on every single edge highlight. <laughs> Yeah, occasionally Scott will bump the uh, the HDMI plug with the side of his head, and that makes the camera go a little wobbly. Yeah. If it makes you seasick, move further from your screen so it takes up less of your field of view. Nah, Jess, we're just talking about the normal stuff. One of the things you learn from doing routine shows is that you repeat yourself a lot because there's always different people coming in and out. Yeah. Totally fine with repeating myself. Mm -hmm. Talking about the same thing. And speaking of repeating ourselves, you can link your Twitch Prime account <laughs> or your Twitch account to your Amazon Prime account and subscribe that way. It's as easy as going into your account settings and hit link my Amazon account. And it's free. It's free. Money. Miniatorium wants to know which is better, apples or oranges? Oranges. Wonkabonk gifting si five subs. Wonkabonk! My man! God damn. Thank you, sir. That's where it's at. <laughs> Is this Twitch Prime? Did I do it right? No, Wonka Bonk, you didn't. You're going to have to try again. <laughs> <laughs> Has he heard they're making a Morbius movie? Oh, my God. Are they, dude? Got a couple of really generous people in the chat. Definitely. Sometimes you gotta take a step back. You gotta look at that edge highlight you just did. You gotta ask yourself, was that too chunky? Might have been. Is this too chunky? Chunky. Am I the chunky one? Am I the chunky boy? My spine! <laughs> Literally what I yelled when I broke my neck. <laughs> ah, my spine! You, you had the opportunity to be like, my leg! <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't my leg. I know, but still. <laughs> think about the memes. <laughs> is that the, what is that called? Von, the something Von, 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 it's not Von Hells, is it Von Hells scream? Wilhelm? Wilhelm, Wilhelm. Yeah, I but mean. he doesn't yell my leg. What he just he goes, Bleh! Oh, that's, oh, I'm confusing it with the SpongeBob thing. Yeah. <laughs> my leg. Um, is there a way to uncurl brush tips? I have seen people uh, boil the tip of the brush, which in theory sounds like it should work. Boiled brush sounds like a good name for an Instagram painter. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like a witch ingredient. Mm. Boiled mm. brush. Which witch is which, though? Mm.
out here boiling brushes. <laughs> See ya. Oh, you're smoking? Okay. Gotcha. Yo, Scott, I loved your video on AOS as a game system, says Buddy NL, although the title was a bit clickbaity. Given the magical powers for creating an ultimate game system, which setting slash IP would you conjure, and which existing game system would you look like the most? I would love a arena brawler that is slightly asymmetric. So like different characters have different things they can do on their turn, but like the turn structure is the same for both, but like maybe someone has more resources in one phase than the other and stuff like that. And what IP would it be? I don't know. That's a great question. Something fantasy, maybe King Arthur, Arthurian brawler, dude. I don't know. The The IP isn't the important thing. I think it'd probably be like my own unique thing. It definitely would be fantasy. Definitely Scott's fantasy, a fantasy though. boy. Yeah, big time. Um, some kind of fantasy brawler. Um, I am still playing around with the idea of a uh, one model miniature war game, um, but I am making no progress on that. <laughs> Super Fantasy Brawl is really good. Really good. Dota. <laughs> like a, a Dota Brawler. There you go. 1v1. That'd be cool. The belt, the belt probably shouldn't stay gray. Oh, that's going to be the color of the holster. Okay, we're good. We're good. I would love something like ability draft from Dota. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. That'd be rough. High medieval Arthurian or more dark age? Ooh, dark age. What's dark age Arthurian? I would, uh, oh, I already read that. Did we figure out if the bottoms of the knee pads have edge highlights on them? I think that I think the top of the shin has one, so I'll do that now. I don't know if it's one of those situations where it's like highlight, recess shade, highlight, kind of like on the toes and stuff. Bottom of the knee and top of the shin both have highlights, I'm afraid. Come on, Warsmith Paint. Couldn't you just lie to me for a little bit? It is indeed a Valbjorn. Witness me for my correctedness. Battlebjorn. Battlebjorn. flow with my brush right now, or my paint rather. Talking about audio in jokes, I highly recommend everyone watch this ridiculously long H Bomber guy video about the oof sound effect that's supposedly from Roblox. Spoilers, there's a lot more to it than that. But he talks about the Wilhelm scream for a while in this, which is why it came to mind. Really good video.
It really is an hour and 57 minutes long. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, if you're looking for something to watch while you're, uh, while you're painting after our stream ends or whatever, there you go. Um, if you're a fan of the horror genre, Magikarp Used Fly released a nearly two hour YouTube video about the history of all horror. And it is incredible. The history of all horror. Yeah, I haven't watched all of it yet. I watched like an hour of it. Um, oh, the, the, yeah. the history of all horror movies. Yes. Okay, here we go. I'll it's link still, that in the chat still too. still crazy. That's a lot. The history of horror is longer than the history of horror movies though. So. Big brain. The history of horror. Scott only watched the non scary parts. Yes. Absolutely. Trying to draw a perfect circle. Yeah. I don't know. Fucking A. All right, let's get some of this darker gray. Let's see if we can fix the side of this circle that got a little wonky. Peace out, Jimmy Hayes. See you, Jimmy Hayes. He says, got to run. Thanks for getting me through the end of the workday. Paint more minis, to which I responded, sorry, it's just this mini for the next 200 hours. Got to get ready for Golden Demon. I'm not going to do it. You can't speak it into existence. I will all kinds of things into existence, Scott. Do you? What else do you will into existence? I don't know. Dang, the Wilhelm screen chat is still going. <laughs> Jimmy Hayes says he can't wait to see it in the case. <laughs> Number one, Golden Demon Slayer Sword winner. Let's go. Imagine the existential crisis Scott would have if this miniature won a trophy at Golden Demon. I don't know if I'd have an existential crisis. I think I would just be like, I think I'd be very surprised. What's the opposite, opposite of existential? Man, words really failed me there. The opposite of existential. Uh, Nihilism? I don't think I know the answer to this. <laughs> Chicken stencil? Thanks, John. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but which one came first, John? The chicken existential crisis or the egg existential crisis? Uh, 
Existentialism is the opposite of nihilism, according to this thing from the University of Idaho that I'm looking at. For Camus, the entire purpose of existential philosophy is to overcome absurdity, or more accurately, for man to triumph over the absurdity of existence. So existentialism is the opposite of nihilism. The nihilist says, there is no God, no heaven or hell, so screw it. There can be no right or wrong, let's party. Whereas with the existentialist says, there is no God, no heaven or hell, so you and I alone must figure out to make life meaningful and good. We must, in fact, work without cosmic aid to figure out what good itself is. Okay. Cool. We're learning stream. hard to paint this space marine like they do in the box art it's so difficult if you want a good experiment for brush control good like uh, exercise just try to paint a space marine like they do in the box art it is not fucking easy it's a lot of work it's a lot of it's a lot of brush control. It's a lot of that. It's just, you just make so many mistakes, or at least I do. Yeah, Mike Genie, I wasn't even going to highlight that one. <laughs> Why are you painting gray on gray? <laughs> I'm sorry, Ben. I'm painting a space marine. I'm painting a gray space marine. Nothing but the grayest. The grayest of the gray. More like gray tist. <laughs> I don't get it. I would assume they batch paint between multiple people at GW to handle this stuff. Oh, for sure. For sure. Also, they're definitely faster than me. Like that, no doubt about that. If this is all you do, you're gonna get pretty quick at it. Relatively speaking, anyway. Yeah, for sure. There's also that and the other thing, fucking up, don't mind me. Um, the other thing is that uh, on troop choice models, they don't, they don't paint this tediously. They don't do the shading toward the bottom of the armor panels uh, for troop stuff. For like hero stuff, they do. Yeah. And then I figured I would go a little fancy for the the last space marine I'll ever paint. Might as well make it worth it. To slay the gray, not paint with it. Nice, nice Star Wars reference. Yeah, you got to go a bit fancier to get that golden demon. So it makes sense that you do the hero style. Yeah, just a bit fancier. Just a bit. We also got that sick conversion done. Nice. That's another thing. I don't know if you are allowed to do that. I don't know if you're allowed to paint someone else's sculpted model and enter it in golden demon. I did this. GW is going to release vampire wood elf marines and make Scott eat his words. I'm not, I, I won't. It was that would be the ultimate revenge. Yeah, we've released this really cool wood elf faction, but they are in fact space marines as well. <laughs> I mean, there are space marines that I kind of dig. I kind of dig dark angels. 
It's okay. There, there are so many models in the world. Synonym. Subscribe with Prime. Uh, see ya, Anavana. Don't people do that by painting GW minis, though? I'm sorry. Uh, what, uh, what, what, what are we talking about? He's, he's making the point that it is someone else's sculpt because you didn't make the GW oh, mini. Oh, so. okay. Got him. Dude, that is the ultimate got you, dude. I'm going to say that. I'm going to enter this and they be like, you can't. You didn't, like, you didn't, you didn't sculpt that space marine. Dude, yeah. That is the ultimate got you. I already don't like Dark Angels. You don't like that? You don't like that religious vibe? I mean, the only Space Marine chapter that I'm into is uh, Black Templars. Yeah, okay. Black. I also dig Black Templars. My, my problem with Black Templars is a lot of people who are Black Templar fans are insufferable. <laughs> oh, no. So they're like way too into it. That's unfortunate. But I really liked, uh, I really liked the Hell's Reach YouTube adaptation that the guy did out of the audiobook and turned it into an animated movie. And Grimaldus is my homeboy. He's your homeboy. He's cool, man. You want to play 40K? Not really. No. I mean, I do because I want to be able to say that I have. Yeah. But uh, ev everything that I've looked at about it is I just go, wow, this is like AOS, but a lot less fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and AOS already has some things in it that I find pretty unfun, <laughs> even though I like that game. I like that game more than you like that game, I think. Do you know, I mean, you know the the one comment that I received the most on that that most recent video? So you should play 40K because it's better. No, it was all of these comments can be levied against 40K, but like 10 times. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like rough, dude. Yeah. And I wanted to say to every single one of those people, it doesn't make it, doesn't make it okay in Age of Sigmar, uh, but fucking A. That did not encourage me to play the game. <laughs> no. I enjoy both systems. I'm happy for that. Shadespire is where it's at. Miniatures Den. That's not even the name of the game. God damn it. It's Underworlds. <laughs> <laughs> what up? Vincenzo. Each have their pluses and minuses. The weird thing is how different they are. Well, that may be true, but I think a lot of the minuses that apply to Age of Sigmar, which Scott went over pretty, pretty well in his video, also apply to 40k. Why? Why do I need to look at 50 different rules books? Why? Why is there so much here that says the same sorts of crap? Maybe. Haven't played in a long time, so I do not know. I mean, I'm definitely down to play some Dark Elder at some point. Maybe I'll wait for everyone to be like super hyped about 40k. Like when, like when Tenth Edition comes out. Ooh, Tenth Edition! Everyone's like, "This game fucking rules!" It's gonna be like Seventh Edition again or something. Yeah, the good old days. <laughs> no, I don't know. Girl painting says, "I switched to one page rules, grim dark future because forty k rules." To simply build an army are so convoluted. You need three bachelor's degrees to make one without nap. To which I say. That's not true. You need two bachelor's degrees and a doctorate. It's ridiculous. You have to have like a research background to understand the rules interactions in these games. <laughs> or Battle Scribe. Yeah, Battle Scribe helps. Waiting for Miniac or Ninja to paint up a Space Marine in Kane's colors. Ooh. Dumb short bus war cry player forever here. <laughs> is it? Is it? It's okay. mean. That's mean. All right. Okay. Let me hear it in the chat. Um, when you compare War Cry and Age of Sigmar, which was more of a competitive game, War Cry or AOS? According to you guys, and your definition of what competitive means, AOS, War Cry. Because I've heard so many different things about Warcry, uh, and I don't know. I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't know what to believe, effectively. <clears throat> oh, 
God, this is so hard to paint the inside of this calf thing. Fuck. Warcry has less feel bad gotcha moments, though it is ultimately up to the dice gods. Limited model count demands stronger tactics. I don't know that that's true. I had seven models on the table in our game, and I felt like I didn't take a big tactical approach. I just moved forward and shot things. <laughs> don't remind me. <laughs> My strategy for that game was... Yeah, I'm here. Come get me. Yeah. It's like, you are the one that has to solve the problem. Yes. Not me. Halo. <laughs> Mordheim. Warcry. That's with zero knowledge on either. What the fuck? Well, I will say, most people are saying Warcry. Most people are saying that. Strategy burning it. Yeah, that's true. That is what happened. I rolled some pretty good ranged attacks. Including box cards and one of them. That for me, that was my favorite moment of the whole stream when I said that would have been box cards, but I didn't roll in the box, and then I rolled a six on that die again and rolled box cards in the box. Yep. He rolled one six and then one six out of the box and then rolled it again and got another six. Yep. Rip. The number of the beast. And then I died. Hey Scott. Yep. Do you know what time it is? It's nut time. It is definitely not nut time. It's 420, baby. Hey! 420, 69 seconds. Hey! Would it? Would it, Evan? Yes! Can you not resist the I correction? Can't. I can't resist. <laughs> all right. Um... All right, who should we who should we raid? We are now at the end of the stream. Oh, that's something that we do. I forgot about that. We do. Do you ever play any TTRPGs, D and D, and the like? I did. I don't very much. Akimbo Gogurts. They're not normally my speed, but I'm definitely down. If someone's like, "Hey, let's play an RPG," just you and me, I'm like, "All right, I'm down. I'm down to clown in an RPG, but I don't seek it out." It's a topic that we've uh, thrown around the office here from time to time. Yeah. We also did play Oathsworn and. A game like that is sort of an RPG. It's not, but it is RPG adjacent. Good to know. <laughs> oh, sick. My Prime Gaming loot is available. I can claim my Prime Gaming League of Legends capsule. Ooh. Or your CSGO knife skin. No, I don't know what they do. Mork Bjorg. I love, I love pretending like I know how to say uh, Swedish in uh, Swedish words. Uh, Mork Bjorg is cool. Um, I've definitely seen the book. It's really awesome. Um, I backed Oathsworn Chaos after three years it came. I haven't played it. <laughs> oh, I love that. It's such a vibe. All right. Um, hope you guys enjoyed us painting this gray Space Marine. Uh, I have no idea who we're raiding right now. We grade the gray. Whoa, Tia Martin and Anna Kimbo. What is this? My channel five years ago? This is crazy. <laughs> Um, throwback jams throwback indeed all right guys evan's trying to find out I, we got furiously options. we got plenty of options they just yeah, you know what are the options i mean the usual crowd we got mohawk we got jimmy the brush we've got malev we got monument slow fuse we got a bunch of other people too though rate a small channel to see their reactions we did that last week. We did last that last week, and it was fun. Yeah, not a bad thing. Let's switch it up, though. We'll do. Let's do Malev. I always love Malev. Yeah, Malev, Malev or App for you, which is always the best. Yeah, Malev's he's he's a good one. All right, y'all. Uh, we're gonna raid Malev. Check him out. He's an awesome streamer here on the platform. He'll also be at Adepticon most likely, and you can talk to him there as well. We're all gonna be at Adepticon. We're all gonna be there. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out. You guys subbed a lot uh, today, and I really appreciate that so much. So thank you for that. Appreciate the support. Um, we'll be uh, live streaming next this coming Tuesday, so a week from now. There is no game stream in between now and the next week. Um, but there will be one the week after, or is that Adepticon? Um, I know what Adepticon gets in the way. Um, Adepticon is the 23rd. 20 blah 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 right 
Yeah, so we're good actually. We're good. Yeah, I think I think we're good. No stream on the 9th. Yes stream on the 16th. Yes. yes stream on the 14th. Yes. So we have two streams next week, only one stream this week. So we'll see you in a week from now for the next gaming stream. Otherwise, guys, thanks again for the support. So the support. I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, enjoy Malev. All right, see you guys. Peace.